I've got a pretty creepy story for you. It was so bad, I ended up leaving my job for another shortly after this happened. Trigger warning, underage person being harassed, sexual comments, harassment. I don't go into detail and hopefully I cover everything. Now that we got that out of the way, let's move on to the information. Like the title states, I was 16 when this happened. I was also working at a place where dreams go to die, Walmart. I absolutely hated working there, but thankfully, this encounter was a straw that broke the camel's back. Now, another thing I should mention, I look a few years younger than I actually am. I have a baby face, so even though I was 16, I looked about 13. It was during the day when this incident happened. It was a pretty slow day. I had spent most of my shift wandering around, helping where I could, as I was already done with everything in my department. I was in the middle, heading back to my area, when a man approached me. He was a bit of a creepy dude, but I didn't want to be rude by not helping him, even though everything in me was telling me to walk away. Anyway, creepy guy was asking me to help find a gift for his niece. I asked him if he had any ideas what he wanted to get his niece. He said he wasn't sure, so I took him to the kids section so he could choose something. While he was browsing, he started asking me for my name, if I lived in the city, how old I was, those sorts of things. I obviously wasn't overly keen on providing this information, so I was pretty vague when answering. Other times, I completely avoided the question altogether and redirected the conversation to his niece. It was evident that he wasn't really interested in discussing his niece as he provided one-word answers and went right back to his intrusive questioning. He started asking me more personal stuff, like if I had a boyfriend, if I had sex before, etc. Now, I was horrible at communication when someone crossed the boundaries. I hated confrontation and my managers sucked donkey nuts. They would give me hell for the stupidest shit which made me really anxious whenever I had to talk to them. As a result, I did everything I could possibly do to avoid talking with them. Anyway, I asked him if there was anything else he needed. I just wanted to hurry and end this whole interaction, but of course, he told me he needed a card and a bag to put the gift in. I directed him to the card section. All the while, he upped the creep factor and began asking me extremely personal questions. He also was now giving me compliments. He'd tell me how beautiful I was, how I had such a great looking ass. Keep in mind, I don't look a day over 13, and yet, that didn't seem to stop this creep from making these crude remarks. While he picked out a card and bag, I kept my distance, but I remember he kept giving me the best I can equate to his bedroom eyes. It made me sick to my stomach, but I figured he would eventually get everything he needed and he would be on his merry way. He eventually got his card and bag and asked me to lead him to the till since he didn't know where they were. Obviously he did, but I just sucked it up and directed him to the checkouts. When we got within walking distance of the till, I politely excused myself and felt relieved that I finally got rid of him. Unfortunately, he ran ahead of me and asked me for my number even going as far as making this horrible comment. I like my girls nice and young. They can just keep going and going. You and I will have lots of fun. Not the exact word for word, he said. Nobody needs to hear the real thing. That made my skin absolutely crawl. I told him I didn't have a phone. I did, of course, and it was sitting in my vest pocket. He thankfully didn't seem to notice, but I was beyond paranoid that he would spot the phone and call me out on my lies. Despite being repeatedly told that I, in fact, did not have a phone, he kept insisting that I give him my number or my social media where he could contact me. It got to the point where I was backing away from him because he would get so close to me, I could smell his breath. Unsurprisingly, he didn't take this hint and kept inching towards me. Want to know the real punch in the gut? I had a couple of my managers walk past. They definitely saw the guy harassing an underage employee and they did fuck all to help. I was getting desperate. No one was coming to my aid, which made me feel hopeless on top of it. I thought I'd never get rid of this guy. My saving grace was when my manager was walking through the front door right before the creep got handsy with me. 
My manager was my absolute favorite person. He was pretty intimidating, used to serve in the military. He was also a pretty big fella, pretty muscular, and could probably break me into half with one hand, but he was a gentle giant. Whenever customers got rowdy with employees, he'd intervene. It was always hilarious to see people who were red in the face deflate the moment they saw him approaching. I spotted my manager and gave him a look of desperation when he glanced over at me. I can't tell you how relieved I felt when I saw him make a beeline for us. He placed himself between me and the creepy dude and slapped on his customer service smile. He asked if he could assist the creep since I was supposed to be on my break. I happily took the hint and practically ran to the back of the store. I went to the staff room and was shaking from the adrenaline and was on the verge of crying. I was in the staff room for about 20 minutes before my manager called me to his office. He asked if I was okay. I said I was shaken up but fine. He assured me he'd have me working in the back for the next week just to ensure that if that creep came back looking for me, he wouldn't be able to find me. He then told me that the guy kept asking where I went, what my number was, what my name was, but my manager told him he couldn't release that information. My manager literally escorted the guy out of the store and watched him drive away before coming back in to talk to me. I never did see that guy again. Then again, I left that previous job shortly after that encounter. I got another offer to work with my best friend at her dad's restaurant after I told her what happened, which I happily took. I admit, I was a little sad to leave mainly because I really did adore my manager, but my hatred for Walmart and the fear of that dude was ultimately what pushed me to leave. So to the creepy guy who harassed me, let's not meet again, and on the off chance we do, I owe you a punch in the teeth. I'm a 24 year old female. This happened at my previous job and it's a bit long. Howard was a senior in my team. One day, during chit chat, he asked me to recommend some colognes to him. As I know a lot about perfumes and fragrances, I recommend some, and then he asked me to help him buy it. I suggested it's better to try it out in person before buying any colognes, but he insisted many times that I buy my recommendations for him, so eventually I did. After I bought it, I WhatsApped him the receipt. He texts back, Thanks, I'll treat it as a gift from you, lol. He ended up paying me back later, so I just took it as a joke. The manager of my previous team, Alfred, asked me to grab a drink after work another day as he noticed I was frustrated at work lately. He also said I could invite more people if I wanted to. So I invited Kate, my closest friend in the company, who's also on Alfred's team. Kate suggested that we invite one more colleague as she believed it would be better to hang out with a group of four. I think for a bit and invited Howard as he had worked under Alfred before. I told Howard that Alfred wanted to buy us all drinks. I have drinks with Kate and another colleague, Aiden, regularly after work so that was the first time I hung out with either Alfred or Howard. After the drinks, we decided to take the last scheduled subway home. Only Howard and I lived in the same direction. I knew he lived near stop A from previous chit chat, which is 10 stops before my stop. I live quite far away from the subway station, an hour walking distance, so I planned on taking a taxi after I got off at my stop. After we got on the subway, Howard started to say some things that made me uncomfortable. For instance, he asked when he could become as close to me as Aiden or whether Aiden had ever been to my apartment. To be honest, I wasn't even that close to Aiden and we were more like work friends. I was annoyed by all the questions, but I thought to myself, but I thought to myself, it's just a few more stops till his stop. I'd have my peace soon. But Howard didn't get off at his stop. I asked him about it to which he replied that he had some errands near the next stop tomorrow morning so he'd be staying at a friend's house. So the next stop comes up. So stop B is just the next stop before my stop. Luckily Howard shut up, probably because of the lack of my response, 
and I just looked at my phone in silence. I just noticed Howard was still there when I was about to get off at my stop. He followed me off the subway and offered to take a taxi together. He said that he would drop me off at my place and then go to his friend's place, which would make no sense at all as the two drop-off points are in completely opposite directions at my subway stop. I declined by saying I planned to walk home. He didn't know where I lived. Then he offered to walk me home. I sat an hour away and persuaded him to just get on the taxi outside my subway stop. He finally budged and called the taxi through the app, which shows the estimated fare. I overheard him murmuring the amount, which was definitely more than just traveling from the subway station to where the other stop was. More like traveling back to his stop that he lives at. I suspected the stay at his friend's house thing because he had an errand in the morning was a lie just to follow me home. A week later, Kay told me that she overheard Howard insinuate to Alfredo that we were in a relationship. I was crept out by Howard, but didn't want to bring it up to Alfred, as he didn't ask me about it either. A month later, Alfred invited his team and a lot of other people he previously worked with to dinner to celebrate the end of a project. After the meal, Alfred asked me where I was heading to, as he knew I have two apartments. Kate and Howard were walking with us. I told Alfred that I'm going back to my apartment in the same direction of Kate's, which was the opposite direction of Howard's. Howard joined in the conversation and said that he's going in the direction too, as a friend of his was hosting a party there. Kate and I were pretty doubtful. On the subway, Kate asked him where the party was, and Howard said it was at Stop C, which is exactly at my stop. So Kate and I pretended we had to go other places to hang out, and I was not getting off at C. Howard got off at Stop C eventually, and I rode with Kate to her stop, and then got on another subway back to C. I avoided him as much as possible before I eventually quit. I worked at a corporate headquarters as a receptionist, after they announced a very political divisive celebrity as their new face. This was a very unpopular decision with some people and threats were frequently called into headquarters after the ad campaign had rolled out. Around this time, I was closing up my building on their main campus one night alone. It was after dark and I was locking up my desk. For example, the company headquarters is not open to the public but people do not really know this and it's common for people to wander in and ask if there's any points of interest to see because it's an extremely popular brand. Most people coming to the front desk are employees or contractors or have meetings scheduled. There are turnstiles and no one can get past reception without clearance. You have to have a reason to be here. If you're wearing a competitor, you can be asked to leave. A man in a gray jumpsuit walked up to my desk and told me he would like to speak with the CEO. Obviously, he couldn't just walk in and immediately speak to the CEO. I asked him if he had a meeting scheduled with him. He said he didn't, but added that he had some business to settle with him and would like to have a sit down with him and listen to some things he had to say. This obviously set off immediate red flags. I told him that. Unfortunately, only his assistant could set up meetings and that I didn't even know if he was in, etc. The CEO wasn't even in my building and the brand has hundreds of receptionists, so there was literally nothing I could do. So I just offered every possible excuse and said that I could take his contact info. The man then came behind my desk to swivel my computer screen. I could then see he was clearly armed. He spent a few moments arguing that he knew that I had the CEO's phone number and office location and did not to play dumb. Finally, he leaned over me, told me that he was going to step outside for five minutes and by the time he came back, it would be wise for me to have the CEO on the phone or in the lobby or that I better be able to walk him into his office directly. Fortunately, we have those emergency buttons like the banks do. I hit mine and security was called to my desk. I explained the situation and they went looking for him. 
I guess when he saw security come out, he took off running into the parking lot, jumped over the landscaping, and got away. Security escorted me to my car that night. They pulled the CC footage later, and when I saw it, it was so creepy to see his body language and his proximity to me from another perspective. He had his hand placed where his gun was concealed the whole time. Another creepy thing. Even with his threatening language and demeanor, he was smiling and being weirdly flirty in that condescending scary way. Like trying to be charming so I wouldn't feel justified escalating things or calling for help maybe. I'm still so unsettled when I think about what could have happened if I made the wrong move during the encounter. Or if security wasn't two buildings over on the campus that spans miles. Every single nerve in my body was telling me that I was in danger and him running seems to have confirmed it. About an hour ago, my manager and I were closing shift at a store in a small town in the north off the main road across rented control apartments. I was working at the register as usual and watching people come in around 10 minutes before close, watching who came in so that I can make sure that they left. There's this guy that came in that I randomly hyper fixated on. He walked down the main aisle towards the bathrooms and went out of sight. I don't know why, but I, I wanted to make sure that he left. Customer after customer came and went, but five minutes to closing time, he never left. My manager went to the bathroom, and I stayed by the register until she came out and went to the office. I walked around the first few aisles in the front towards the door and didn't see him. My manager came out and wanted to buy some things right before we were supposed to close. I told her that I saw a guy come in but didn't see him leave. I felt really uncomfortable and disturbed and thought it was just because I had been listening to this insanely creepy podcast, The Black Tapes. But after she checked the whole store and I went around to check with her, we saw that he left a basket. We went into the office after I grabbed my stuff and we checked the cameras several times. We saw him come in, we watched the cameras again, forwards and backwards, every camera outside and inside, right by the exit and incoming door. He never left. We decided to leave after about a half hour and called the general manager. I never saw him leave. The cameras never recorded him leaving. I've been terrified since it just happened. I apologize if this is long, I just can't stop thinking about how I feel at work since all these things have started happening and I don't know if I'm being too harsh or not as I've experienced something like this before in my life. So my new manager started at my work. He seemed pleasant enough and nice, quite funny and I get on well with him. But then I started seeing two different sides of him. I noticed he was quite flirty in a joking way with my other colleagues, but I just thought that that was his sense of humor, a bit strange, but nothing I was concerned with. Then as time went on, I noticed he began to get closer to me and started to touch my shoulders or arms for a few seconds while talking to me and showing me things around work. I work at a retail shop. The first times, I thought nothing of it as it wasn't noticeable enough for me to be uncomfortable but I began to notice it was every time he was speaking to me and there's just no need to touch my arms for a few seconds while talking to me about work. It invaded my personal space, but at the time, I gave him the benefit of the doubt. I didn't know him well and I didn't want to make it awkward. But the thing that made it weird to myself was that he would always make it apparent and obvious if he touched me. He would always apologize and say things like, Oh sorry, I know people don't like it, and, sorry, I'm getting close there. And just announces the fact he touches me and gets close to me. At this point, I'm just questioning why he mentions it and brings it up to the surface. If he didn't think it was a problem, then why would you speak about it? At that point, I thought it was odd, but there was nothing he did that was over the top, if you will. He had not made any sexual comments or touched parts of my body that was my space only. And we had worked alone plenty of times, and he didn't do anything out of the ordinary. Just some weird comments about being, sorry for touching you. 
Then my boyfriend told me to watch it because every time I work with him, there's something else that happens where I think, oh no, not again. The more I've worked with him, each time something else happens and it becomes a noticeable pattern. Then this happened. My manager and I were looking over the work board, talking about the orders for the rest of the week. I said the wrong date accidentally for an order and he looks at me and pauses laughs and then wraps his hands around my neck facing me for a few seconds and says oh you mary what do you like then removes his hands from my neck i laugh it off really awkwardly as i was taken aback that he touched my neck it was quite a shock so i didn't really process this happening but i have not had anyone touch me like that in my life this was the first red flag for me but i still didn't think much of it and just thought it was one of his one-offs a few weeks later, we're discussing the upstairs of the shop floor when we were alone. He's showing me the days off he has given me. And I say, thank you. That's very nice of you to do. Then he looks at me and says, can I get a cuddle for that? And smiles. We were standing side by side to each other. So I hesitantly say, yeah, sure. Because I didn't want to be awkward. After I gave him a side hug, he shakes his head for a few seconds, laughs and says, oh, not a cuddle. I mean a hug, you know what I meant. And I just continued to laugh awkwardly as I just don't know what to say. Later, we were discussing work on a different day and looking into the storage box. I again said something wrong about where something was placed and he pauses and looks at me, laughs and says, Oh my Mary, you deserve a slap on the bottom for that. I really awkwardly laugh. He looks at me to wait for what I have to say in response but I didn't say anything as I felt too awkward to say please stop or anything else. I really didn't know what to think. That is all he's done to me personally and the touching my shoulders or arm casually is what he has done multiple times. I've discussed it with my other colleague and she had the same experience with the touching and we both think it's weird. I've also started to notice the comments he makes to customers and he's quite forward and creepy with them. For example, we have some free chocolates on display for customers to have, and these were heart-shaped chocolates. My manager is serving someone and says, Go help yourself to chocolate if you like. I promise I'm not hitting on you. Haha. <laughs> I heard that and thought, that is such a creepy comment to make, and I know if I was the customer, I would not like to be spoken to like that. He is also very hot and cold and has been quite rude to me before during work to the point where I had to go upstairs and take five minutes to myself to collect my emotions and not say something I would regret. I won't go into that as it's not particularly relevant, but sometimes he's kind, but other times he can be very short tempered and rude to myself and customers. I'm trying not to overthink this, but lately it's all I'm thinking about as I don't know where the line is or what to say to him. Everyone tells me to report him and say something, but I'm really stuck on what I should do. I have officially confirmed I do feel creeped out by his behaviors and can't ignore how I feel anymore. Any advice, or is this even an issue? Edit, I forgot to add the thing that made me write this post. When we were closing together recently, he started to talk to a young girl and said, She's similar to you. The girl came in inquiring about a job posting. He made a comment saying she's lovely, but then he started talking about what she was wearing and says, she's wearing these jeans that had multiple rips in them. It went all the way up from her feet to her thigh. Oh no, not that I was looking at her legs. I don't mean that. And he would stumble while saying that. That to me was very, very odd. And I was uncomfortable with that comment. I've started writing all the incidents down. Update, I told my area manager this morning. He was incredibly supportive and listened to every word I said. He actually says the dates don't entirely matter. The fact it happened is enough to go grounds on. He's gonna give me a call on Monday to discuss further and he said he's gonna tell his hierarchy at HR and then we'll go from there. I was petrified to say anything, but he reassured me that he was glad I told him and all of this was inappropriate. He also said I shouldn't have to come to work feeling this way and he said as my manager he should know that this wasn't correct and it's nothing I should be blamed for. I feel so much better after telling him 
I'm just now thinking of the conversation afterwards and all that, which gives me anxiety, but I'm so glad I told someone. I'm a 27 year old female. I used to live in a small town where everyone basically knew everyone and people in the smaller towns in the area. In 2018, after I had lost my job, I was going to a place where 16 to 30 year olds learned how to look and apply for a job and a lot more. There I met a woman who I'll call Y. One day, Y started to talk to me about a friend of hers who lived out of town with her mom, her dog, and her creepy German stepdad. Her friend told her that she desperately wanted to move out because her stepdad makes her so uncomfortable. Her bedroom is right next to their bathroom, so she would usually put her clothes on in the bedroom. But now she does it in the bathroom because he looked at her inappropriately when she walked to her bedroom. According to Y, you could see the bathroom door from the living room. Her stepdad would get off the couch and try to spy on her. I had a gut feeling that this wouldn't be the last time I heard of him, and I'm sad to say that was right. I broke up with my ex in 2019, but shortly after that, I got a job at a thrift store taking care of jigsaw puzzles and board games. 2020 came along, and I became so lonely that I downloaded an app that was aimed for finding friendship. I started talking to this guy in January who said he was 26 or 27 and that he was from Germany and lived in the same exact town that Y said her friend did. I thought it was odd, but out of curiosity, I talked with him some more. He said he had moved to Sweden with his wife and their dog. Insert red flags here, but he's looking for someone to talk to because they're going through a divorce right now. He wanted to meet and perhaps go for a walk in the forest near his house talked about his hobbies, he liked his motorcycle, and other things I've forgotten about by now. This is also important. My creep meter was pegging, and I ghosted him hard. Eight months later, when I was laying a jigsaw puzzle, I heard a man with a German accent come in. I felt something was off, but I continued to do my job. For obvious reasons, we didn't have a lot of people who worked there at the moment, and this made me the youngest woman there. I was 25 at the time. My male boss was going to do something before he showed him the place. While my boss worked, this guy roamed around and asked if he could sit down and talk to me. I said okay, because of course, there could be more than one German person, even in a small community. Remember all the important things. Yes, he told me almost all the same things again. He wasn't the age he said he was. He was as old, if not older than my father, who was 53. The color just appeared in my face and I started to scratch my neck in fear. He started to trauma dump on me. He talked about how he had sex with a young girl in Germany, got her pregnant, and was forced to leave Germany because of this. Apparently, she gave birth to a son, and his son reached out to him when he was older. His son told him that he was gay, and the creep is now blaming himself for making his son gay. He talked about his dad's alcoholism and other things I can't remember now. He also asked if we could eat together, but I declined. HR came into our working room, and she called my name. I turned my head, and she clearly saw that I was afraid. She said she needed to talk to me. I only nodded, stood up, and walked over to her still scratching my neck. We walked to the other room where I sat down on the sofa and she asked me if I was okay. All I could say was, I'm afraid of this man. And when I had calmed down, I gave her a short version of what happened and her eyes widened. It was close to closing time, so she asked if I wanted to go home and that she would make sure that he left 10 minutes after I had gone home. My apartment was only five minutes away. I didn't even look at her once I was so frozen in fear that I only stared at the wall while continuing to attack my neck. After a few minutes, I only nodded. She walked me to the employee entrance and stood there for a while while I walked home. I saw the damage I had done to myself when I arrived home. My female boss wasn't there until Monday and unfortunately HR wasn't there that day. My boss came over to my desk and said that she had spoken to HR and she wanted to hear it from me. I told her exactly what happened, and I also told her that I had heard about him before. 
Her response was these exact words. I've heard of him before because I have an old friend who unfortunately is in a mental hospital right now. She told me that he's the kind of person who likes to attack young girls, thin, vulnerable, and insecure women. I fit that description. My fear turned into rage. I just looked at her and said, are you crazy? You know what type of man he is. You knew that I'm working here and you still hired him? She said that she had talked with the male boss who also knew about him and they had decided that people can change. I said that I agree, but he has already shown that he's not willing to. She decided to make him work during the weekends and forbid him to come into work during the week when I was there. Of course, he showed up anyways. When HR was there, she would tell him to go out, but when she wasn't, you could clearly tell that he was looking for another victim or for me. My bosses are lovely people, even though they're severely confused. I should have reported them, but it's too late now. I moved to a city that's more than two hours away, and he doesn't work there anymore. Edit. Sorry, I forgot a very, very important fact. The thrift shop I worked at hired people who are in vulnerable situations and are desperate for a job, and they still hired a predator knowing that fact. Hey guys, I was just reminded of this really scary incident involving a manager at one of my old jobs I had. This happened about 5 years ago when I was 20. I believe he was around 42 or so, give or take a few years. To paint you a picture here, the manager in question, who we'll call Tim, was a short Viking-esque guy. Red beard, red hair, bright blue eyes, stocky built, not muscular though. Tim was also a heavy smoker and known racist piece of shit. He dropped the n-word at least four times a week for shock factor during conversation. During conversations, he would also refer to indigenous people as Indians. He stopped when he found out that I was Métis and confronted him about it. He was mostly bark with a little bite, but still someone I was cautious around nonetheless. He also had a girlfriend who was also 20 at the time. She was like an alternative reality version of me. Like me, she was a bigger girl, size 24 to 26 ish, piercings, tattoos, the works. I looked like the replicate tall version of her. It was surreal. He never outright told me that he had feelings for me, but on several occasions he commented on how much I reminded him of his girlfriend and would ask if I was into women and in three ways. I'm bisexual, but he didn't know that. I gave vague answers every time he asked something of the sort, but one day he made an off comment about bisexual women being greedy, to which I reacted negatively to. He put the pieces together from there. A couple weeks went by of him asking me questions about my interests, my hobbies, what I do in my off time, my favorite music, etc. Normally I would chalk this up to office banter, but with the creepy undertones I had a hard time engaging with him about my personal life. At this time, I had also started seeing my now partner of 5 years. When my boss asked again what I was doing after work, I informed him that I was going to see my boyfriend. This sent him into another question tailspin. He asked me how we met, how long we'd been dating, where he lived even. It was really unnerving. Once again, I kept the answers vague, but this time I went on and on about how much I loved my partner and how excited I was to have such an amazing partner in my life. I wanted to be crystal clear that I was not interested in my boss. That same evening as we were closing, he told me about his favorite music. He specifically mentioned a band called Immortal Technique and a song of theirs called Dance with the Devil. I shrugged as I wasn't familiar with the song, so he put it on the store speakers while we swept and closed the cash. For those of you who are not familiar with the song, it's a very graphic and disturbing song that has a rather intense twist at the end. If you like that song, that's your taste, whatever. But personally, as a woman, I find it difficult listening to graphic depictions of extreme violence against women, period. Tim turns up the music to almost a deafening level while I count the cash and get our computers closed up. 
As he's sweeping, he's actively and loudly rapping along word for word, dropping end bombs of course, all the way through. He hadn't been looking at me until the later half of the song, where the lyrics begin to depict a woman being raped and killed by a group of men. It's visceral, violent, terrifying. Tim turns to me at the point of the song and stares into my eyes while pointing and dancing to the lyrics while rapping along. He was making violent gestures while doing this, motioning a head stomping gesture with his hands, thrusting during a rape, etc. I quickly closed cash faster than I ever had in my life. I felt like I was in danger at that point. I grabbed my bag and jacket as the song finished. He turned it off and goes, Isn't that something? It's poetry. The storytelling is just amazing, isn't it? I remember my whole body was tense. I muttered, not my cup of tea, and left. I should have given him my notice right then and there, but I was in a rough employment situation and couldn't up and leave. After that, he actually stopped scheduling him and I together very often. And about a month later, I gave my notice after finding a better job full time. He was furious when I left, of course. The company actually ended up closing that location a few months later because Tim lost it, according to our common connection, a friend of mine, a worker of his. This friend of mine also told me that he upped and moved to the other side of the country to be with his ex-wife. What made me remember this story was that a few months ago I was running errands in the outskirts of my city. I happened to stop at a random Taco Bell and guess who walks in with a very young looking woman on his arms? Tim. I was with my partner who also recognized him. My partner and I were already seated at this point. Tim looked at us like a deer in headlights and booked it out of there faster than a kite in the wind. Before he left though, I noticed that he shaved his head and got some suspicious looking tattoos on his arms. When he turned around, there was a distinct white power symbol patch on his jacket and his girlfriend's jacket too. So not only was this guy a creep, but also a predator and now a white supremacist. I don't go into that area anymore unless I'm accompanied by my partner at all times. Tim is very much a part of my past and I have no desire to run into him ever again. Feels good to get this off my mind and onto paper, so to speak. Working as a waitress, people often treat you badly. For every 25% tipper, there's 10 old guys who leer and tip 10%. I usually made it through my shifts okay, but one customer interaction truly creeped me out. It was a slow night and this older couple got seated in my section. The wife seemed spacey, but nothing too weird. When I came back to their table to get their drink orders, she was slowly rearranging the sad little fake flowers we had for decoration. I joked about it, some line about her messing with my arrangement. She looked up at me, wide eyed. I'm a florist's daughter. She was still moving them around and looking at me and I left with her drink orders. I came back with her drinks and she's done playing florist. I asked her what they want to order and while the husband is speaking she interrupts him repeatedly to order soup. Same tone each time. No indication that she even hears him speaking. I ask her if she wants that served first as an appetizer. She stares at me repeats the same sentence. The husband cuts in and confirms that they want it as an appetizer. I leave and put in their orders. Later, I stop by and ask how their food is. The wife grabs my sleeve right at the elbow and pulls me towards their table. She compliments the food, but at this point, I'm feeling uncomfortable. Her grip is pretty strong too, so I repeatedly tug at my sleeve to get away. Finally, they're done with their meals and I ask them how everything was while clearing their plates. The wife is very pleased and is still staring at me, wide-eyed and blank. Then she says, I never got your name. I usually don't tell customers my name unless they ask, so I tell her. She stares at me, unblinking, then asks, Do you know what it means? My name is very common, so it's a weird question. I'll say it's biblical. She continues to stare, then she says, It means, beloved by God, that was my daughter's name. She grabbed my sleeve again, 
I know she was beloved by God because he took her back so soon. She's still staring at me in a weird, wide-eyed way. Then she smiles. The husband is quiet, unbothered. And I kind of stutter and get out of there. Maybe she was still grieving or on something like heavy-duty mood stabilizers. She had less than one glass of wine, but I was really convinced that I was going to drop dead after that conversation. It was so ominous. I didn't feel physically threatened, sure, but it was the creepiest conversation I've had with a stranger. So this happened about a year ago, and at the time, I was 17. I'm a male, so this guy hired me to do basic stuff around the building he managed. However, he always gave me this weird feeling like something wasn't right with him. But he paid me $20 an hour, so I stuck by, despite feeling like I should leave. He would often talk to me about how everyone else he had hired in the past would quit because they were weirded out by him. He would ask me if I was weirded out, but I would say no because he's paying me a lot. After a month of this, it came to a climax. He pulled me away from sweeping and told me to take a seat. He told me that I would have to distract him or else he would do something that he would regret. So for an hour I just talked to him about anything and everything. Throughout the entire talk he kept saying that he was a terrible person and has done horrible things. He told me I would hate him if I knew what he had did. Throughout the conversation I was worried he would do something so I contemplated running or fighting but instead I just kept talking. Eventually he seemed to calm down and said I could go home for the day, but asked if I wanted ice cream first. I refused. I got home and texted him that I was leaving. He apologized, and I haven't heard from him since. I want to start off by stating this is my first ever Reddit post, but I've always loved listening to stories from the subreddit on YouTube, and I wanted to share my own. For some background info, I'm female and was 17 at the time of the story. I used to work at a pizza place in my hometown. The job sucked in many ways, but the worst part about it was that my manager had no problem leaving girls alone to close. Granted, the town I grew up in was small and boring, and most people left their doors unlocked, but I still thought it was risky. On this particular night, I was closing the shop alone at around 10. The last thing I had to do was take out the garbage on the way to my car and the dumpster as well as my car were located on the side of the building. While I was making my way to the dumpster, I immediately noticed a man making his way towards me from across the shop's parking lot. He was wearing jeans and a black sweatshirt and had some sports cap on. Right off the bat, my heart dropped and I got incredibly nervous. I threw the trash away and began speed walking to my car when the guy said something. You got a cigarette? My paranoia told me the question was sketchy as hell, and I struggled to respond for a moment. I just said no and got into my car, hastily trying to get in. I shit you not, as soon as I closed my door, he booked it to my car and tried to open it. Obviously, I had immediately locked it. I instantly started bawling my eyes out and turned on my car. The man clubbed my window with his fist a few times, without a word before booking it again into the nearby streets. I called my mom and then the police once I got home, and they opened a small investigation, but could never find the guy. There were no other cases of something like this happening somewhere in this town, and so I think he was probably relocated somewhere else to avoid being caught. I really have no clue what the man wanted to do. Sorry if this was kind of lame or anticlimactic, but it was pretty damn scary to me. So to the man that tried to get into my car, let's not meet again. I'm a 17 year old female. I work at a convenience store, gas station, located on a trucker route. Given that information, I'm sure you can deduce that the people coming into the store aren't always the most respectable. I've had people get a little too friendly, but it's always been a line between Well, maybe they're just being really nice and I took it the wrong way. And this is kind of creepy. But one customer a couple days ago didn't leave much room for debate. I had a guy at least 30 to 35, if not older, come in. 
He got his things and came to the register. He started his interaction with, Hello beautiful, how you doing? Alrighty, I felt uncomfortable just by that tone. But I shook it off and simply said, I'm doing alright. Or something like that. I figured that maybe he just had a weird way of greeting people. He wanted cigarettes, so I asked for his ID, to which he said something that sounded really creepy, and how I just wanted to have his picture, or a dress or something, and he also winked at me while saying it. To which I laughed uncomfortably, and said, You should know, I'm 17. He responded, Yeah, right. As though I was lying or something. I got him his cigarettes, and cashed him out without saying anything else. I think he called me beautiful again as he left, which just made me uncomfortable all over again. This all happened last week. I was working a late night shift at a bakery. I was starting to close down and I had locked the door behind me as I was walking to my car. When I was at my car I saw a paper that was stuck to the side of my car. But I've heard a lot of stories about people getting kidnapped when getting stuff on their car in the middle of the night. So I didn't want to take the risk. When I got home, I took the paper off my car and it said, Hey, and then my real name, which I'm not going to put on here. I thought it could be one of my coworkers, but I didn't know I was going to be totally wrong. Fast forward to the next day. I called off work because I felt ill and had a massive headache. Around 9am, one of my coworkers called me and asked if I could tell my friend to stop calling the shop asking for me. I asked her who it was, but she said that the person didn't want to give her his name. After the call ended, I called all my male friends and asked them if they were calling into my work, and they all said no. Nothing more happened until Thursday came around. I was cooking up some food, and I had forgotten to buy onions, so I put on my shoes and walked to the nearest shop, which was about 10 minutes from where I live. I was walking up and down the aisle because I was looking for a specific type of garlic powder. When I found it, I was on my way to get the onions. I was grabbing the onions, and when I was about to turn around, there was this tall man that had to be in his 60s standing right behind me. I apologized for bumping into him, and said that I didn't see him. He told me that it was just fine, and told me that I was pretty. I didn't know what to say back other than thank you, and smile. He then proceeded to put his hands on my back, and rub it gently. That's when I had enough. So I told him I had to go and quickly walked away, paid for my things and headed home. I had kind of forgotten about what happened some hours later. The next few days nothing really happened more than I got a letter and some phone calls at night. On Sunday it took a horrible turn. I was at home watching a movie in the living room which is right next to the main door. There's a wall blocking the way which means I can see out but people can't see in. I was halfway in this movie when I heard a loud bang sound, so I tried to look out. I saw the same man trying to get into my house. He was screaming my name and how he was in love with me and how he thought I looked like his wifey the first time he saw me at my job. I paused. I had completely forgotten that this man had been a customer at my work. I tried as quickly and as quietly as possible to go upstairs, but he started to throw his whole body against the door, so I sprinted to my room and locked my door. I called 911 and explained the whole thing that was going on, and the police arrived at my house in 15 minutes. They found the man in my house hiding under the table, and he had a camera, rope, a pocket knife, and gloves. They took him away, but other than that, I don't know what happened to him. I can't imagine what would happen if the police hadn't gotten there in time. To the creepy customer, let's not ever meet again. I work as a merchandiser and one of my stores happens to be in a very high crime area. Tonight I entered my car, instinctively locked the doors and grabbed my phone to put in my next job site address. Not five seconds after I got in, a disheveled man aggressively ran up to the passenger side and started forcefully yanking on the handle trying to get in. I turned the engine on and got the hell out of there so fast. As I was driving off he was screaming something at the top of his lungs. I'm not sure what that was all about, but I definitely dodged a bullet tonight. That was frightening.
This is something I've never really told anyone about, but I've been thinking about it a lot lately. So here it is. A few years back, 2015 or 2016, when I was 18 or 19, I used to work at a little cafe inside a car parts factory. It was basically a full out but compact restaurant kitchen and lunch room for the workers to eat there. Well, this one day, I get a call from my best friend, coworker. She's all kinds of upset because of this new creepy temp worker that made her feel severely uncomfortable by asking her a bunch of personal questions like what she drove, where she lived, if she was single, had any kids, when she got off work, etc. She didn't want to walk out to her car alone. Mind you, she was my age too, 18 or 19, and this dude was in his mid to late 30s, if not already in his 40s. And we're in Flint, Michigan, so we weren't about to take our chances. I drove up to the parking lot, found her car, parked next to it, and she has a security guard escort her out. We didn't see the guy then, but she described him to me and the security guard, and that was that for a few days. Someone found him and told him to stay away from her, and he did. But then he met me. I knew exactly who he was as he stepped up to the register to place his lunch order. Just from the description I had been given and by the creepy vibes he was giving off. He pulled the same intense Q&A on me that he had done to my friend too. But instead of telling him to fuck off or calling security or anything like that, I just told him a bunch of straight up lies. I told him I drove a blue 2012 Honda Civic, which I knew for fact was one of the second shift manager's vehicle who always parked near the front of the building. I also told him that my shift ended at 930 which was really the time that I usually slipped out for a cigarette break. So when 9.30 hit later that night, I walked out to smoke a cigarette and saw exactly what I was expecting to see. That stupid creep in the parking lot close to the area that the Honda Civic was parked. He was just pacing back and forth between two vehicles that was parked a few spaces down in the same row, playing on his phone the entire time. At one point, he glanced up and saw me staring at him, but I had my big leather winter coat on and a hat, so I don't know if he recognized me at first from the distance or not. I finished my smoke and went back inside and explained the entire situation to the security guards, one of which was the original guard that had escorted my friend out to her car a couple days before, and they were dying laughing at the fact that I pulled one over on this prick and had actually caught him being shady. I'm not sure exactly what they did about it, but I do know they immediately went out to confront him in the parking lot and that the guy was fired the same week. To this day, I still don't know what his intentions were, but it doesn't take a genius to figure out that it couldn't have been anything good. So ultimately, the moral of the story is, always have your friends back and trust your instincts because if you don't, you could end up cornered in the parking lot and possibly attacked or abducted by a creepy guy who asked you too many questions. Edit, since I didn't include this originally, after my friend and I were informed that this guy was fired, We were told his full name, and my friend paid to do a background check on him. It came back with a violent criminal history of domestic abuse, assault, and battery with a weapon, jail time served for violating a PPO, and parole, and some other things. Over four years ago, I worked at a warehouse in a small town that I'm from. I decided to leave after my health started to get worse physically and I was diagnosed with panic disorder and severe anxiety after the situation I'm about to tell you about. This changed the way I developed friendships after this job, that's for certain. So I started this job on April Fool's Day 2018 and I had no high expectations of the job. All I wanted was to do my job, get paid and go home as I have two children at home. The job wasn't hard and it made pretty good money for all the duties considered so I really couldn't complain. I worked second shift for about 5 months then I went to the day shift. While working the second shift I kept to myself mostly until one day I met someone after we struck up a conversation about gaming. We'll name him Jeff. Well Jeff was a pretty good guy and we had a lot of things in common. I went home that night and he popped up at my suggested friends on Facebook, which was odd, but I decided to add him. 
When I did, we started talking more at work until he suggested that we should hang out. So we hung out pretty frequently. We were friends for a month at this point, And one day he decided that he was going to introduce me to his partner. She seemed decent at first, super nice. Didn't seem to be the judgmental type. So I was cool with her. From then on, I would hang out with him when my kids were spending time with their mother. One time, we were talking at a restaurant and he started to vent to me. Dude, she's such a bitch sometimes. The other day, I forgot to take out the trash and she threatened to stab me if I didn't. I've never been in a relationship where someone's threatened me, but she's got good intentions, dude. When he said that to me, I was concerned, but of course, we'd only been friends for a month, so I thought maybe he was being morbidly jokingly, so I chuckled at him. He gave me a pretty serious look and said, I'm not joking. She really did. That concerned me. Fast forward about eight months. They're still together and we hung out pretty regularly. One day, we were all talking and he seemed a little off that day, so I asked him what was wrong in front of her. He flashed a smirk and said, Nothing, dude. I'm just a little tired. He didn't have his eyes on me, though. He had them on her when I asked that. When we went to work the next day, I asked him again. Do you promise it's just between us? Of course, I agreed. He said that he was breaking up with her and she went a little crazy. He said that she grabbed her gun and pointed it at him and said, If I can't have you, no one will. He said he defused the situation and is trying to look for a way out. Not really knowing what to say, I just said, You'll figure it out, man. If you need somewhere to go... You can come stay with me until you get her out of your house. Fast forward into the next year. He finally decided to leave her. When he did, she flipped out again. This time, he told her over text. She said that she was going to find him and kill him. And he was actually out of work that day with a vacation day. He sent me a text and said, Hey, let me know if she comes over to work looking for me. This struck me as odd because I had no idea about the situation that was unfolding. She actually did come over to our job and she asked me where he was. I said, I have no idea. I thought he was with you and you guys went out of town or something. All she did was roll up her window and drive off. I called him and told her that she came by and he called the police about it. They found her up the road with a loaded gun in her car. Two months later, he decided to talk to her again. He asked if I had seen her around and I hadn't. He said, I'd take some vacation days if I were you. Dumbfounded, I asked him why. Because she's out of jail and her cousins are in town trying to find people she has personal vendettas with. You're one of them. At that point, I was terrified. I grabbed my kids and went out of town, took two weeks off of work. Came to find the next day, her and her cousins went to the next town over and shot and killed three people in an apartment. The reason why he knew that they were coming after me is because they made a Facebook messenger group that he was included in and set a list of names. Everyone regarded it as spam and decided to disregard the message, but he knew what it was. Three of the names on the list were the people they shot. The fourth name on the list was mine. After they found evidence, he decided to go public about the group and the screenshots that he had. They were all charged with first degree murder. From then on, I was very careful about who I stuck my neck out for, because even though he knew the context of the list and her intentions, he decided not to inform anyone else. Needless to say, we aren't friends anymore, and I dodged a bullet, literally. This happened a few years back, but it was so wild that I tell everyone about it when I'm talking about weird encounters. I worked at Woodfield Mall in the department store. I usually got out by 9 p.m., but this day had ended up there closer to 10 p.m. As I was balancing out my register, I had this intense feeling of dread, like my stomach dropped, and I just had a terrible feeling about leaving the building. If you don't know, Woodfield Mall is one of the biggest malls in America, and it's very busy all the time. I made my way to the employee break room, 
where the stairwell that led to the second level parking was, the same feeling of dread came over me again. I decided to call my friend and keep him on the phone until I made it to my car. When he answered, I literally said, I know I'm being stupid, but I'm just nervous to walk to my car alone. As I open the door to the parking garage, all I see is a giant parking lot, nearly empty, my car, an extra large SUV, and about four spots away from my car are two cars, surrounded by a group of ten very seedy looking people. I immediately tell my friend what I see, and he was like, just keep talking to me and walk as fast as you can to your car, which had my heart racing because I had to walk right past them to get to my car. I hurriedly walked by and jumped into my car. I let my friend know I was good and panicked for nothing. We disconnected and then I hear a tap 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 on my window. My heart sank as I turned to see who was tapping on my window. Of course, it was one of those creeps. I rolled my window down a fourth of the way. I'm in a huge SUV and he was somewhat short, so he couldn't reach in through the window. He asked me if I had a lighter. He must have seen me light up a cigarette as soon as I got in my car. I told him my lighter's on its last leg and might not light, but I hand it to him. He began to try to spark it while stopping to ask me all sorts of weird questions. He kept asking me if I wanted to go for a walk. Around an empty mall parking lot? No thanks. I declined multiple times. At that point, I'm just feeling annoyed until I see him pull his own lighter and light his cigarette. Now my head was spinning. Maybe he just used the lighter excuse to talk to me, or maybe it was something worse. Some things become a little blurry conversation-wise because the fear took over. But I remember seeing his friends gathering in front of my car, which made me extremely nervous. I tell the guy to watch out because I'm going to flick my cigarette out the window. So he backs up, and I flick it towards his friends hoping they might scatter. One guy got mad and started getting loud, so I just apologized and said it was an accident. He walked off with a pissy attitude and his friends followed. Thank God. I tell the guy by the window that I have to go, as my gas light goes on and makes a ping sound. The guy hears it and pops up right next to my window and says, Looks like you're going to run out of gas, Miss Lady. Hope you don't break down on the side of the road. Followed by a small, mischievous smile, and then says, Maybe I'll see you around. At that point, I don't care if I run his feet over, and I just floored it out of there, and could hear them all laughing. I don't know what the fuck that was all about, but it was absolutely terrifying, and I spent the entire time looking over my shoulder at the gas station, and on my drive home. Stay aware, friends. And always trust your gut. I was 17 when this happened. I had an early morning shift at a restaurant and used a bus to get there. When I got to the bus stop, someone was already there. This was strange because it was so early in the morning. I started to walk to my workplace just to notice the man started following me. Seeing the man follow me got me scared, and I started to run. There was just so much off about this man. The whole time he looked at the ground, but also started to run when he saw me running. I quickly ran to the back doors and saw him coming in the same direction. When I closed the doors, he was just a couple meters away from me, and I saw that he tried to open the door that I had locked right after me. When I was pacing inside the restaurant, my coworker came to me and said someone was trying all the windows to get in. We called the cops and later they told us that the man was carrying a tiny saw with him. Sometimes I think about what he would have done if he would have been quicker than me. Anyways, the saw man. Let's not meet again.
In my early 20s, I landed a receptionist job in a sales office at a manufacturing housing community. It was my first job after working in daycare and the food and drink industry. I was excited. I greeted potential buyers, set up appointments, and staged the spec homes with our stock of furniture and decorations. I worked with one other person in the office who was the salesman. When he was out of the office, I took potential buyers through our spec homes and gathered their information for a follow-up. I was working alone one day when a customer came into the office looking to potentially purchase his first home. I gathered some information from the young man and asked if he would like to look at our spec homes. As we walked down the sidewalk toward a row of spec homes, we chatted about various floor plans and finishes available. I knew the product information and had no trouble confidently answering his questions. He was friendly and reminded me of a classmate from high school that had played offense on the football team. I decided to show him the two home models that best fit his price range and desired floor plan. Since I shared most of the technical information during the first home tour, I gave him some space to freely look around the second home. We walked through the main living room and stopped in the doorway to one of the back bedrooms. He called out, Hey, what is this back here? And pointed to the corner of the room that I couldn't see from where I was standing. I knew these floor plans by heart, so I politely answered that it was a closet. In my mind, I was sarcastically thinking, Really? You don't know what a closet is? He chuckled and asked again, No, really, come here. What is this back here? I could tell from his tone that he was pressuring me to come see for myself. He motioned for me to come closer and take a look. His tone was friendly, but his request didn't make sense. So I paused. And in that split second, something shifted. Maybe it was the energy in the air, the hairs on the back of my neck standing straight up, or the way his eyes changed before me. I suddenly sensed the power dynamic had shifted. I did not feel safe. With all the lightheartedness I could muster, I repeated, Oh, it's the closet. Excuse me for a moment, I need to check something outside. I quickly made my way to the exit to the sidewalk and outside the house. I had no concrete reason for why I felt the overwhelming need to leave the house immediately. I didn't understand why my body sensed danger. I just knew I had to act quickly. Over the next few days, the young man came back to the office to meet with a salesman. He filled out various paperwork needed to purchase a home and live within the community. He dropped by several more times unannounced to check his application status. If I wasn't there, he would ask the salesman when I would work next. My coworker thought I had a not-so-secret admirer. I couldn't shake the overwhelming feeling that something wasn't right, so on the nights that I worked alone, I locked off his door. A few days later, corporate sent back the analysis of the young man's application and completed background check. He had been denied. The background check revealed multiple sexual assault convictions, and there it was. Crystal clear, undeniable 2020 hindsight. The salesman called the customer right away to let him know that his application had been denied and that we could not do anything further for him. A few days later, the young man decided to come back to the office one more time. When my coworker saw the young man's vehicle turn into the parking lot, he told me to go into the back room of the office where I would be out of sight. And just like the times before, the young man entered the office asking if I was working. This time he was met by a very angry six-foot salesman with nothing to lose. I had never heard my coworker raise his voice before, but on that day, his voice shook the office walls. Needless to say, the young man never came back, and I wasn't scheduled to work alone nearly as often. I work a graveyard shift as a security guard for a recycling yard. I had been on the site for two weeks, this being the second. Basically every hour I make rounds across the giant recycling yard covered in various precious metals that are broken down and sold. During my shift, I scan various checkpoints to ensure no one beside me is in the yard or facility. One of my other tasks is to go through some grassy bushy terrain and over a set of train tracks to take a photo of the warehouse far across. This is to ensure that it's safe and clear. 
I have to use a flashlight with 2K lumens so I can see all the way through pretty much the entire yard. Well, just an hour and a half ago on my round, I went through the grass and over the train tracks. I took the picture of the warehouse and submitted it. All of a sudden, I get this intense feeling that I'm being watched. My hairs on my neck stand up and I freeze. My flashlight is still pointing at the warehouse. I slowly turn around and pull my flashlight behind me. Kid you not, about 10 yards away I see a skinny, old, wrinkled white man with a large white beard sitting on a chair. He was looking directly at me. He had dirty jean overalls and what I think was a western style cowboy fedora. He was bare skin under the overalls. Now I'm a 6 foot, 220 pound man, but I screamed, fuck, at a pitch that was embarrassing. I accidentally dropped my flashlight out of shock. Mind you, there are thin, teeny metal shards literally everywhere on the ground. I can't see a damn thing now as the flashlight is facing away from my sight. All I hear is quick pace, shuffling, clanging of metal from footsteps quickly running towards me. Once the metal crunching footsteps were within five feet of me, I hear them quickly veer to my left and pass me. Within three or four seconds, the metal clanging is gone, followed by a faraway sound of rustling bushes. I then grabbed my flashlight from the ground and pointed to the sound. The man was gone, past the bushes to who knows where. I was shaking from adrenaline and fear. I managed to catch my breath and call several emergency contacts. When they arrived, the old man was long gone. I believe maybe he was just there to watch the active trains move across. I say this because the metal chair was facing the tracks. It's still there. I am now in the office, still terrified and alone. I have to finish my shift tonight and tomorrow do another 11 hour graveyard. I won't quit as I need the money. I just wanted to get this off my chest. This happened a handful of years ago. We had a transfer come on the team from another department within the company. He was nearly completely deaf meaning he could hear really, really loud noises, but nothing else. He did quite well speaking out loud, and he read lips to understand what was being said to him. No big deal. It was an easy adjustment to make sure you faced him when talking to him, and talked one at a time. He was a decent team member in the beginning, but after a while, started making comments to me and the only other female on the team. Things like, why haven't you made the coffee yet? and just other stupid old school jokes that made fun of women. My role gave him instructions on customer requests and needs. He would often not follow my instructions and I would get calls from customers complaining. Often I had to let him know that he had to go back and fix the work so it matched the original request. Afterwards, he would storm into my office and yell at me as if his inability to read and follow simple instructions was my fault. I got so tired of it and said, do your job right the first time and there wouldn't be complaints. This of course didn't go over well with him. He was angry and very unnerving. I got the feeling that it wasn't going to stop there. In the following weeks, he would intentionally block doorways I would be trying to go through. One time I was in the other female worker's small office and he blocked the entire doorway. He stood there and smiled this creepy smile as if he was saying, what are you going to do about it? I refused to touch him to try to pass by him. The other lady kept looking at me like she was beyond uncomfortable too. It was like we read each other's minds and we kept having our own conversation about something work related and ignored him. After several minutes, he left. Another time, I had to go to the far back of the warehouse to organize some stuff in the room. I remember going in and thinking... Okay, there are two cameras, and they can see the main hallway, but not between the shelving units. I had an uneasy feeling that he would come back there. Sure enough, a few minutes later, he came barging into the room and came right at me. I had already been on high alert, so I quickly exited the door in the room and booked it back to where the rest of the team was. I pulled up the security cameras to see if he had a reason to be in there. Sure enough, he paced in the room for a few minutes after I bolted. And then he laughed. He clearly had no reason to be there that exact moment that I was in there. 
I shared this with a male coworker friend, and he said that he would go back with me to any of the spaces away from the main team areas. I had to get my work done, but I didn't trust that I could do it without this angry guy finding me. Anytime that we make comments about his anger or demeaning jokes, the managers would say, Oh, maybe he just doesn't understand because you talk too fast. I bet it was just a misunderstanding. As if having a disability means that you can also be a disgusting person. Not too long after that, I heard from another teammate that this angry guy had grabbed a female's upper thigh, literally right above her private area, squeezed and said, Does this make you uncomfortable? Then laughed. A few teammates witnessed it, but they didn't know what to do as the other female worker froze up. I immediately went to HR and told them everything he had been doing to intimidate, belittle, trap, and of course the sexual harassment. He was fired the next day. When they escorted him out, he yelled, This is retaliation. HR asked me if I would make a comment, and all I could think was it had to do with me standing my ground with him. I was so scared that I would see him show up unexpectedly. I told my family what he looked like, his tattoos, the car he drove, anything that would identify him since they never met him. I blocked him from every social media platform too. After he was let go, other females came forward and shared things that he had said or did to them too. They had told the managers but they were dismissed because the guy was deaf and he didn't want to deal with the lawsuits. As much as I hate what he did to my coworker, I'm grateful it gave us a final boost to get him fired. You were all enormously supportive of my last library creeper post. Working in the public lends itself to the endless strange encounters, so I'll keep posting as they roll in. We are about five minutes from closing the library tonight. Mondays are very slow in the summer. So at the five minutes to close, we are basically waiting for the clock to tick. All tasks are complete. You may get one or two stragglers in to pick up something on hold, but not often. It's generally very quiet. Not tonight. This man walks in and I say, We're just closing up. Can I help you? He hollers from the entryway. I'm looking for a book. Okay, if you come to my desk, I can help you. He brushes over and says, you close at 11, right? I've worked here over six years. We have never closed at 11. I tell him no and ask him if I can assist him. By this time, my two other coworkers are up front with me asking what was going on and who was shouting. He just continues to stare at me like I have multiple heads. I ask again, can I help you? He says he needs to use the phone and reaches for the death phone. Nope. I move it away and tell him he can use a public access phone in the lobby, but at this point, he only had three minutes to do so. He again reiterated, he knows that we close at 11. I again tell him absolutely not, we close at 8pm. By now, we are all thinking that this guy is going to be a hassle to evacuate from the building at 8pm. My coworker is waiting near the lobby, asking what we should do. Since I'm the person in charge, it's up to me to decide how to handle this. No pressure. I told her, I'll go with you and check the restrooms, close down the bookstore, and start shutting off the entryway and lobby lights. My other coworker, I direct to stay near the phone. This guy is just odd, and if things go south, we may need help in a hurry. We are all feeling on edge now. She and I lock up and turn off the lights. He, meanwhile, is scrolling through the public phone the call log, not making a call at all. It's just a random listing of numbers, so I don't know what he expects to find there. I tell him that it's time to wrap it up and we need to close. He begins to head back into the library. Oh no. I'm pregnant and exhausted, ready to go home. He's not going to go back into the library. As loudly and assertively as I can say, we are closed now. You need to leave. He again tells me that we close at 11. I don't know if this man is on drugs or simply confused, but he needs to exit. My coworkers back me up and say that he needs to leave or we'll call the police. He finally relents and heads out the door. We pull everything closed after him and ensure it's locked. I look at my coworkers and say, no one leaves until he leaves the parking lot. 
They both readily agree. The last thing we need is him harassing us off the premises too. We wait and wait a good 10 minutes until he finally drives away. I don't know what this man's deal was, but I hope he won't become a regular library creeper. I'm a 25 year old female. I was probably 22 at the time. I used to work at Starbucks and there was a regular there. We'll call him John. John was old enough to be my dad, probably in his 60s. I'd see him every day and we never really even made any small talk. I ended up transferring to a store down the street and I noticed John started coming in. I thought maybe he just frequent stores in the area, no big deal until he started bringing me gifts out of nowhere. He gave me his old Bluetooth speaker, perfume, roses, a giant stuffed animal, etc. I hadn't seen John come in for a few days, to my surprise. I'm on a break and someone calls to tell me that he's asking for me. He hands me the straw hat with painted birds all over it and says, I just got back from Mexico, saw this hat and it reminded me of you so much and knew you had to have it. What the fuck? To top the cake, I graduated college while I was working there. John comes in probably a week later with a bunch of pizzas and congratulates me for my victory. I never told him or really made a big deal about it at work. This is a customer who I went from seeing every day for two years with minimal contact to absolute off the deep end love bombing coming out of literally thin air. This happened around 2019. I was 21, 22, young, dumb, naive. He would ambush me in front of my coworkers and customers, putting me in an extremely awkward situation. I never kept anything he gave me. I had a coworker who was a struggling single mother who happily accepted everything. Again, it was things like giant stuffed animals, perfume, a speaker, clothes, food, etc. I moved two weeks before the pandemic really hit in March 2020 and I haven't seen or heard from him since. I'm going to contact a few coworkers who know who he is and see if he still goes there. I'm a 23 year old female. I was working at a coffee shop about a month ago. I recently quit because of personal reasons as well as not feeling very safe there for good reason I guess. It was at a main strip at a beach and the owner is very willing to let anyone in and let them step all over her. Anyway, probably two months ago, a couple who had just gotten married, December 2019, started coming in every morning, grabbing coffee and chatting with me. This lasted about a week. She was foreign and such a joy. You could practically see light radiating off of her smile, just full of life. We followed each other on Instagram. I remember wondering why she was married to her husband he was awkward, quiet, and just seemed a little strange compared to her. Fast forward, my former boss texted me about a week ago, this long message with a link to a video about this girl and her husband and how they bought a house close to here and he ended up murdering her in their new home. This happened a few years ago and still rattles me when I think about it. For context, I am female and at the time, around 25 years old. I worked in an office of around 150 people. One day I received an email from a coworker, but didn't recognize his name. The email basically said something along the lines of, I'm sorry if I did something to offend you. Given the situation, if you prefer never to see me again, I understand and will avoid you in the kitchen. I was extremely perplexed as I had no idea who this guy was, but I must have done something to offend this person, right? I responded back, I'm sorry if I offended you. Sometimes I zone out and it could be perceived as me being rude, so I apologize. After this response, he started getting irate, basically denying my apology and acting all passive aggressive about it. I wish I kept the screenshot of these emails. But basically, he was confusing the hell out of me with this misunderstanding. So I sent him a message suggesting we resolve this in person. Big mistake. He agrees to meet in the kitchen in the office. I go there and immediately see a tall, 30-ish year old guy who I'd seen around 
but had never met before. I explained to him that I apologize, but I truthfully have no idea who he is, have never met him before, and don't want any issues. What happens after makes me very concerned. His face flushed bright red and he looked visibly angry. He was stuttering and denying that I didn't know who he was, and then says, You've been staring at me for months. When you made eye contact with me, you gasped and ran away. I strongly denied this to him and told him that it was a mistake. He kept insisting that I had been staring at him for months and that he could see me doing it. Eventually I realized he couldn't see reason and decided to end the conversation. Upon reflection, I realized it's possible he thought I was staring at him because when you walk in the hallway next to the kitchen, there's this room with glass and at the end, a bunch of desks. His desk would have been right in line of sight if you're walking down the hallway. And he had a funny sticker on his desk that I sometimes looked at, but this seems like a huge stretch. After the incident, a coworker pulls me aside and asks me why I'm talking to him. I explained the situation. She looked scared and told me last year he appeared in the office in a bathrobe, raving like a madman at people, and for some reason was not fired. Was I dealing with someone in the midst of psychosis? Was he dangerous? No clue, but I reported him as soon as possible to my manager, who took it serious enough to tell his manager. I don't think he works there anymore. Thankfully, I left the company two weeks later, but I was extra cautious not to go anywhere near this dude. So I'm going to tell you this story of a brief encounter I had with this man called Happy. That's the name he gave me. I'm sure it wasn't his real birth name, but it adds to the creepy ambience of the story. Even though it happened around 9 years ago, sometimes he still crosses my mind, especially on gloomy overcast days in LA, just like the day I met Happy. 2013, I'm working at a cannabis dispensary in Venice Beach, a block away from the boardwalk. A good 35% of my patrons were unhoused people. Occasionally, someone experiencing severe psychosis would try to come in, but if they were screaming or unintelligible, security would not let them in. If they had and presented the holy trinity of medical papers, ID, and cash, they were good to go. We had a compassion program where we would bag up a gram of shake left over from the bottom of jars and give them completely free, one person per day, to anyone who asked. Word about this spread quickly on the boardwalk. Generally, these people would be the nicest, most polite and considerate customers, even if they did smell a bit stinky and their money got pulled out of a sweaty sock. No one working there would bat an eye if someone came in smelling like they slept on the beach for a week next to a bottle of vodka, as long as they just calmly buy their weed and be on their way like any other customer. It was a foggy, chilly day around the holidays somewhere between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Someone called out, so I was the only person in the back butt tending. There was another employee at reception and a security guard at the front door. I'm alone in the back room. There are cameras, but no one is actively watching them. This guy walks in after being checked in the front. He's the only customer at the moment, and I swear the whole room gets colder as he walks in. He is wearing a very worn in, deeply faded, wrinkled, confirmed to his body, floor length leather duster jacket and a beaded up, wide brimmed leather cowboy hat. It looked like he had lived and slept in the same clothes for years. We do not allow hats, hoods, or sunglasses in the store, so I'm surprised security didn't make him take off his hat. This man was at least 6'5 and built like a boulder, not obese kind of large pick you up and toss you like a rag doll large. The stench that came off of him is unlike anything I've ever smelt before or since. It was beyond body odor, beyond piss or shit. It smelled like actual death. As if he had raw rotting carcasses tucked under his thick, long leather coat. I thought I had been hardened by plenty of nasty body stink before, but this was absolutely revolting far beyond anyone who hadn't showered lately or pissed their pants. I was trying not to inhale very deeply, and I say, Hi sir, I'm sorry, would you mind taking off your hat? Just store policy. Big customer service smile. 
What are you looking for today? He grins deeply. He's walking very slow, shuffling and dragging his feet. His voice sounds like he gargles with gravel, rough and wet, raw and angry. I don't take off my hat. At this point, I'm not trying to argue with this man about his hat either. Let's get him in and out. I glance down and he's not wearing shoes. The bit I could see from under his coat, one of his ankles is massively purple, black and swollen, melon sized. The bottom of his feet are bloody and tore up. I realize he's leaving a slight trail of blood as he drags his raggedy feet across the concrete floor of our shop. My first thought is how and why the fuck security let this guy come in. Second is, this guy is seriously injured and that is concerning as a human being. I'm making sure to keep the display shelf between me and the guy, but that's only about a foot space, like a bar. He gets to me and the stench gets stronger. I meekly but sincerely say, are you alright sir? His eyes flare at me, what do you care? And I'm like, welp, I tried, not my chair, not my problem. Great, what can I get you? He pulls up his sleeve to expose his forearm. It is covered in large round burns like from a cigar, some old, healed, and some fresh, pussy, and infected. It's not track marks, it's burns. He also has a jagged homemade stick looking and poke tattoo of a smiley face, a crooked circle, two lines for eyes, and a scribbled up curve for a smile. He points at his tattoo, Happy, my name is Happy. The rotting stick was so strong and I needed to breathe little gasps, the least possible. I walked all the way here from Pasadena. I'm like, well sir, that's a very long walk. Anyway, what are you looking for today? Just for you. His eyes are menacing. He is smeared with a layer of grime like he lives in the woods dirty. He doesn't look your average crust punk or disabled veteran you generally see living on the beach. It was hard to guess his age, but he wasn't very old or young, somewhere between 30 to 50. He looked like he dragged himself here from his log cabin. I of course had never seen this man before, once was more than enough to make him unforgettable. He keeps staring at me as I move far back as I can towards the wall, hopefully out of grasp if he lunged. I would need to walk out from beyond the case and around him to get to the security guard. I'm weighing my options. I decide to grab a bunch of compassion grams and then weigh out a one eighth and mark it down that I'd pay for it later. And he's still just leering at me, wheezing heavy, stinky breaths. We actually have a special day only for people who walk more than 10 miles to get here. This is all for you on the house. Thanks for stopping by. He accepts the bag, but continues to stand there and just stare at me. Thank you, happy. It worked. He grunts gruttle noises that is not a word and slowly turns and shuffles back towards the door. At the door he turns back to me and says, I'll see you later. He finally walks out leaving plenty of a stench of death behind. Thank Annie and all of the gods I did not see happy later or ever again. When I asked security why the fuck they let him in, he said that he knows his bloody feet and said, Hey bro, you good? That looks like it hurts. Happy just stepped up into his face and threatened to choke his ass out, calling him the n-word. And since it was just him and a 22 year old, 130 pound girl, he was trying not to die tonight and figured hopefully Happy could just get some stuff and leave. He was watching the cameras in the back, ready to call the police and the owners if anything weird happened. Apparently we had different definitions of weird, but I understood his reaction and ultimately, we were all fine, just spooked and creeped out, and now needing to clean the blood off the floor with bleach and gloves, and text our boss that he owed us free weed about it. He agreed, and we all lived happily ever after. I'm a 19 year old female. So to start out, I work as a cook at a restaurant. About two months ago, we got a new hire, I'll call him Kyle. One of my friends who also works there mentioned that he's a little odd. The first time he met her, he said, yeah, I'm a weirdo. She thought I was a bit random and yeah, 
weird. Anyways, he doesn't drive, so he gets rides to work. He will be there early, and instead of sitting in the lobby to wait for a shift to start, which everyone does typically when they're waiting, he kind of hovers in the back for an hour or more. That in itself isn't too bad, on the surface, right? Well, he's made a few comments that really just made me feel a bit odd. I was pushing a cart around the corner and politely said, Excuse me, as I move past him. In a higher pitched voice, he goes, Hit me, run me over, please, and then laughs. I was just like, uh, okay then. Now he does this all the time and makes comments like that every time I come around the corner. Or he comes into my area in the back, he looks at me and makes a soft quack or weird noise. I don't even know how to describe it. It's very odd. Recently, I saw him do sort of a tap tap gesture to one of our coworkers' arm. And then when the coworker asked him what he was doing, he said, shanking you. The other day, he was scraping a tool and was sort of slicing the air and looked at me and said, I'm cutting someone or something like that. I didn't even know how to respond to that, so I just turned and walked away. He just makes me so uncomfortable and he will constantly do things and hover or just stare when I'm doing my job. It's not all directed at me, but I haven't seen him quacking at anyone else. I mentioned this guy's behavior to my GM and he thinks it's odd, but hasn't done anything about it really. It's a whole nother story, but I don't think my GM will do much since about three weeks ago, he called me drunk asking me to be a sugar baby. So he clearly doesn't care much about professional boundaries or comfort in the workplace. But yeah, that's my creepy encounter. This isn't super creepy or terrifying and probably, unfortunately, pretty common for most women. But this was my first encounter like this and it really stuck with me, so I thought I would share. When I was 18 or 19, I worked at a cashier at a grocery store. I was not by any means super attractive. I'm a girl. I was short, a little chubby, plain looking, had acne, had fuzzy hair, and never wore makeup. I also have bad social anxiety and come off very socially awkward. I don't say this to fish for compliments, just to say that I don't think this guy really was attracted to me and didn't care about boundaries. I really believe the reason he messed with me is because he could see that I was shy and got off on intimidating me. Anyway, one day I was working ringing up customers as usual when a man, probably in his 60s, came behind my register and put his arm around me, laying his hand on my hip. He then put his mouth right next to my ear and asked me very quietly if we sold sunglasses. I froze. I couldn't move for a few seconds. I was so uncomfortable and felt so violated. Somehow I was able to call my manager and ask if she knew where the sunglasses were. I was so relieved when she told him to follow her and he did. I thought that this would be the last I'd seen of him but unfortunately it was not. He came in at least three more times always waited in my line, and while he never came behind the register again, he would constantly tell me how beautiful I was and how he loved my hair, or whatever creepy random thing he decided to say that day. Thankfully, I don't work there anymore and I have not seen him since. Anyway, not the most dramatic story, but at 18 and very socially anxious, it scared me bad. Wherever this guy is, I hope he has a terrible day and maybe steps on a Lego. I'm a female and was 17 at this time. I got a job at the beginning of the year. It lasted 6 months and this experience was near the end. To start off, I would walk home in the dark right out the back door because there was a stretch of asphalt, a small hill, and then a sidewalk path leading into my neighborhood nearby. Even though it was a 5 minute walk and through a neighborhood, my mom got me some maize in case of an emergency for when I was walking home. Out the back door, there was a small nook before a small road on the edge. You had to walk forward and to the right to get to the dumpster and there was a teeny parking lot in the nook to the left. It was closing shift for me and another male co-worker. I had a good relationship with him and we considered ourselves friends. 
As I got time to take out the trash and clean the place, my coworker started on the dishes while I took out the trash. We had quite a few bags, so I had to take multiple trips. I go out the back door and see a car. I'm really bad with car names, and it was sort of far away, so I'm not sure what kind of car it was, and I think the car was a lighter color. The car was driving very close to the little hill at the end of the asphalt, and as I watched, the car stops and the headlights go off. I think to myself, well, that's not great. Better keep an eye out. I go back inside for the next load of trash, and when I come out, the car has gone from the edge of the road to the furthest parking lot stall to the left, much, much closer, lights still off. This is when I knew it was not good. So as soon as I finished throwing the bags into the dumpster and I've gotten close to the door, I announce loudly that I'm getting my maze. I grab my maze from my purse inside and then I go to my coworker and ask if he'll walk me out to the trash because of the creepy car. So we open the back door, my mace in my hand. The car is now nowhere to be seen. I apologize to my coworker and tell him what happened and he believes me and still helps me out with the trash. When we're done cleaning and ready to go home, he offers to drive me home and I declined and asked if he'll walk me to the sidewalk stating that I have my mace for a reason and I will use it if I have to. I get home just fine. After that, I never took out the trash without bringing my mace with me. I even remember warning another female co-worker that if she'd taken out the trash, she could borrow my mace. I'm pretty sure me announcing that I'm getting my mace is what saved me. I'm a 25 year old female. This happened at my previous job and was 98% of the reason why I quit. When I told my friends I wanted to quit because of our annoying manager, male, 30, Ken, and what he did, many of my friends insisted that he was creepy instead of annoying based on the following series of encounters. Encounter 1. Ken liked to make process checking calls at around 2 a.m. I was in a profession where working overtime was pretty much a standard. We would work till 3 or 4 in the morning, or sometimes even overnight. So him calling me at this time was not completely out of the blue. However, a lot of times he called, they were only simple questions that I could have easily answered over Microsoft Teams. The call would still last over an hour, as he was gossiping or just rambling about non-work related things amid the call. One actual call started by Ken. I'm calling you about... Wait, no. Let's gossip first. Do you know Manager X hates colleague Y? Most often, it's usually just me and him on the call, not the whole team. My friend said it seemed like Ken wanted to chit-chat with me rather than check my progress. Encounter 2 We report to managers on project basis. So when a project with Ken finally finished, I just want to be as far away from him as possible. Managers have designated tasks while seniors and associates do not, and hence can sit in any unoccupied desk. I deliberately chose the furthest seat away from Ken every day. Our office has restrooms on either end of the office, 21,000 square feet floor plan. One is near Ken's seat and one is near my chosen seat. Ken would always choose to go to the restroom near my seat and talk to me every time he passed by. My friend who sat next to me counted that Ken went to the restroom as much as four times an hour. Again, my friend suggested that was creepy. Episode 3 Our firm has frequent learning and development events. Most are mandatory unless you have to meet a client or are on leave. Many times during those events, which I did not attend, my friends would tell me that Ken kept asking where I was. I started to feel as if he was weird at this point. Episode 4 I joined the firm right after graduation while Ken worked in other firms in the same industry before switching here. So naturally, I knew more people in the firm and more people knew me than him. A lot of people told me that Ken struck up conversations with them. He would name drop me like, do you know OP? I know her too and they all believed it was weird that my name came up in their conversations so often. I sometimes worried that people would think that we had more than a professional relationship because he always name dropped me. 
Fortunately, they only thought Ken was weird. I had planned on quitting even before I knew episodes 3 and 4 were happening. So I'm glad I got out of there almost 6 months ago. This happened about 10 years ago. I worked at a restaurant downtown. We were open from 6pm to 3am and the customer base was mainly drunk folks looking for some food. At that point in time, we were the only place open downtown in a college university town. Most nights during the week was locals coming in for food. Weekends were a mix of locals and students. I grew up in this town and spent a lot of time downtown as a teen and young adult. We had a lot of homeless in the town and a lot of mentally ill folks that would hang out downtown. The types of ones screaming to the sky or having breakdown episodes in public. So I was familiar with a lot of them. We had a few that would stop by my work often and I would either give them some food and a drink or they would ask to do some work in exchange for food. I was brought up to treat everyone with kindness unless they were complete buttheads. Combine that with being a freak myself, I have a soft spot for anyone that isn't deemed as normal. So needless to say, I was familiar with all of them, either personally or just seeing them around often. Throughout the years, I would often go out of my way to say hello, check up on them, learn their names, etc. Just to show them that someone cares and just seeing them smile and talk for a bit made them feel good and made me happy to know that a simple kind gesture can brighten someone's day. Anyways, weekend customers would come in waves. It was usually dead till around 9pm, then the first batch would come in. Usually ones that went too hard too early at the bars or shop owners closing for the night and grabbing some late dinner. It would usually start to pick up around midnight to 2am as bars closed at 2am and we closed at 3am or a little bit later. One night this woman comes in. We had a few groups of people standing around waiting for their orders. No seating at this fancy place. I was beside the cash register and I was putting sauces in those little small cup things. I heard the door and instantly I had this weird feeling of dread or something I don't know how to explain. I look up thinking my spidey senses were alerting me of a robbery or something and I just see this woman walking towards me. She is staring right into my eyes so intently it felt like she was staring into the back of my skull. I suck at explaining things or over explaining so sorry if it sounded dramatic. She was a heavier set woman, was wearing a long black skirt and a crop top thing that was very revealing. She had very dark circles around her eyes, dark colored eyes, and she was sort of bald and had some small patches of long brownish hair. When she walked up to the counter, she smiled at me and said, Hi, in this weird half raspy, half baby voice. Her teeth were very discolored, half missing, some jagged or broken looking. I immediately felt bad for her because there were people staring at her, laughing and whispering. She definitely did not look normal. I didn't recognize her and she definitely is someone I would have noticed around. I just smiled back and tried to act like I wasn't uncomfortable and asked what I could get for her. She asked for a hot dog, didn't even look at the menu. Keep in mind, she's still staring into my skull at this point. I said sure, and asked her what topping she would like. She said nothing, she just wanted a hot dog. I'm trying to be nice and friendly, and I'm like, plain, yeah we can do that, no problem. Should have mentioned it was obvious the restaurant was very bare minimum, as in each order, I write on a piece of paper and bring it into the one cook we have in the back. I guess my face going back looked spooked and the cook asked if I was good. I told him it was fine, just a full mooner, which was our code for the weirdest people we would always get on a full moon. I can't remember if it was a full moon, but we could use that term generally to describe weirdos, which meant get this order out now to the cook. I went back to the front and she's standing in the same spot, but like staring at one of the groups of customers. They had their backs to her and would occasionally turn around to look at her and laugh and whisper stuff. I felt even worse for this lady and kind of felt bad for her staring at the other customers making them feel uncomfortable. 
or just weirding them out. I asked the lady if she had any plans tonight. She turned around very slowly and said, No. I said, if she wasn't busy, I know a few pubs in the town that have live music going on, and she should check it out if it was her thing. She smiled again at me, and, like, held the smile. An image I can't get out of my damn head, and she says, You're my friend. Not like a question, more like a statement. Immediately regretting talking to her again. Didn't even feel bad for her. Just the uncomfortable and creepy feeling, trumping my other feelings. I nervously said, Hey, I'm everyone's friend. And luckily at this point, the cook came out and brought the food. Another thing we had in this place, with our full Mooner code, so that he could identify the person in case there was any troubles. I gave her a hot dog and told her it's on the house, and I hope she had a good night. We don't give free food to any of the full Mooners. I can't even say I gave it to her to be nice. I was just very uncomfortable and hoped that she would go. Luckily, she did. She took the hot dog, didn't say anything, and just smiled and walked out. I felt instant relief, but I also felt like an ass just thinking these things about her when she might have been suffering from a mental illness. The cook commented about her and was equally creeped out. I told him briefly about the weird encounter and he agreed that it was strange. So fast forward a few hours. Typical night, normal shenanigans. It's closing time. The cook and I clean up and I lock up. The cook would typically walk with me about halfway, then go down the street to his house. The streets were basically dead come 3.30ish when we usually left, but if there were still a lot of people, he would walk me all the way home. This night, he was going to sleep at his girlfriend's house, and she lived around the corner in one of the apartments above the shop. I guess he could sense I was feeling weird still from the woman and asked if I wanted to come chill until the morning. I told him no, I was good, and I'm just going to speed walk home. My roommates were still partying anyways, so if there was a problem, I could call them. I really wasn't too worried. It was one person, and she was probably long gone now. We didn't see her outside or around when we took our smoke breaks. Well, I was wrong. I leave and start my journey north of the downtown area. Streets are dead. Everything's closed. No one's out. Lights are off, dead silence other than a couple of taxis. I got my head down, headphones in, power walking, harder than Richard Simmons on a workout video. I had this weird feeling and immediately take my headphones off and look up. In the distance, I could see a silhouette of a person in the middle of the street. I start to slow down and took my phone out. I get closer and realize it's the woman from earlier. I immediately get this fight or flight feeling. And I'm like, screw it, and start basically jogging on the sidewalk, getting ready to start running. I didn't take my eyes off of her. She raised her arm and pointed at me and was smiling, that creepy smile. My brain's like, uh, nope. I just start running. Called one of my roommates and told her to start walking towards the downtown now. I ran about two blocks before I saw him and started walking and dying inside. Because I haven't reached Mach 3 turbo speed since I was a little girl before I discovered the joy of cigarettes. I finally look back and I can't see her. She is out of view. I fill my roommate in on what just happened that night. We grew up together hanging out downtown too. And from my description of her, he said he never seen her around. Next day at work, I was thinking knowing my luck, she was going to come in again. She didn't. My other roommate was bar hopping that night and waited around for me so we could walk home together. Didn't run into her and never saw the woman again. I described her to the old hippie dude who would frequent downtown and play guitar outside of restaurants. He also said he had never seen a woman like that. So fast forward 10 years and I'm living in a different country. Can't get this woman out of my head. I told a few people throughout the years. Most just agree that she was probably suffering from mental illness. Others have said that she's a witch and bamboozled me for some free food. And one person asked if I was on acid. For the record, no. Figured this was probably a good subreddit for this one. Four years ago, I trained a new worker who was honestly a nice guy at the time. Early 30s, seemingly healthy, very much into yoga and had a beautiful girlfriend. 
He seemed very balanced and healthy. I'll name him Coworker A. We had another longtime coworker who was sort of Mr. Popular with the managers, but honestly, super annoying. Really large personality. People could only take him in small doses. He was essentially the embodiment of a TikTok frat boy who would randomly dance on the job and freestyle. Extremely annoying. Anyway, I'll name him Coworker B. Now, before I explain, I should include this workplace sucked. It barely holds a single star on a deed. It's a large factory with no windows, toxic management, long hours. It was very hard on most people's mental health. So anyway, roughly into a year of Coworker A's stay, things started to change. He and I were mutually friends to another. We would have long civilized discussions about interesting things, but something was really out of place when he mentioned his beliefs about the world being flat and a hologram moon theory. It was really unlike the old version of him who was super rational. I sort of shrugged it off and said it's probably a phase or he's just trolling. Fast forward a few weeks. Fast forward a few weeks, Coworker A has seemingly took a lot of interest in Coworker B and sort of developed some of his mannerisms, but in more of an endearing way, kind of copying his silly dances and laughing. Seemed harmless, but as months go past, he continues to dance more and more to the point that he had even been asked to stop by the supervisors. He would even be moving around at the morning meetings using the same mannerisms and phrases as Coworker B. This really started to creep out Coworker B to the point that he switched shifts. We theorized maybe he was on drugs, but Coworker A was very vocal against substance use, including alcohol, weed, etc. He was also a vegan. Where things change for the worse is when Coworker B ends up getting a new hire at work. She ends up becoming his girlfriend. They move in together, etc. This is when Coworker A shows up at work using Coworker B's name, even signing himself in on the logbook says him, referring to himself as B all morning. Then later in the day, he stands up on a work table screaming, I'm in love with Coworker B's girlfriend's name, with his arms spread out in the cross Jesus formation, face to the ceiling. The whole place went silent, and after, he ended up standing in the corner with a broom sweeping nothing for several hours. He wouldn't turn around from the corner either, not even if he tapped his shoulder or called him by name. The only time I saw him away from the corner was when it was time to go home. He was the last one out. Unfortunately, my job being QC, I'm always among the last ones out as well. Despite both of us being the last ones out of the building, I did my best to act normal when passing him in the hallway. I glanced at him, and he was looking directly at me, head tilt down, making a snarling dog face, eyebrows in a V, tongue and teeth out. The next day, our boss decided Coworker A needed to go to the hospital, so we actually made an appointment and got him an Uber. He was put on leave for a week. The security guard who I'm friends with told me A was showing up in the middle of the night trying to sign in for work at the card reader, sometimes at 2 or 3 in the morning. Anyway, surprisingly, a week later Coworker A comes back to work and seems somewhat normal, almost like he had no recollection of anything he did. He even wrote an entire album on his phone in that time, which surprisingly was better than I thought it would be. But I noticed it was all love lyrics, sort of wanky country love songs. As things seemed to normalize with Coworker A, he stated he really wanted to hang out with me and go for a hike, throw axes at trees, etc. I sort of didn't agree or disagree and told him I had to get back to him on that, as I was secretly a little on edge. He asked me later that day if I was still down, and I said unfortunately I had other obligations. He said, well I guess I can't throw an axe at your face then, and I laughed not knowing how to react at all. I told my manager about that, and he kind of scratched his head uncontrollably and shrugged his shoulders. Anyway, Coworker A ends up finding Coworker B's address due to a work get together where everyone was invited and someone leaked it to Coworker A. They would eventually find rocks and sticks in weird formations on their doorstep, like shrines, and we all collectively knew it was A. Things got really weird when we actually found A looking through their windows at night. He was also scratching the windows with his nails, calling out B's name, repeatedly whispering, I need to tell you.
you something. This is when our manager finally decided to take action and fire A. Four years later, coworker A still stalks coworker B's now ex-girlfriend, who had to get a restraining order against him. He annually makes new Facebook accounts and adds all 200 plus workers who used to work there. The place has got shut down since. He uses a new name each time with a different selfie. He sends messages to each one of us as well saying, Hey, it's B from work. So I guess my question is, what would you call this behavior? And how did such a normal, likable, level-headed person turn into this? Is there a term for this behavior? But what would his diagnosis be? One of my friends had the balls to ask him in a reply if he recalls anything, which he does not seem to, but he sure as hell remembers B's ex-girlfriend and says some extremely concerning things about how she's the one and only one. I'm the bigger one. She's the smaller one. He was put on this earth essentially to save her. He also seemingly has no support at all from his family or anything and is working on a new job, living alone unintended. I feel like this is sort of a risk. About five years ago, I worked at a high-end kitchenware company as a floor salesperson. At the time, I was about 20 years old. I'm a female and this matters later. I'm a larger woman, dress size 26 approximately, and I'm 5'9". I'm also mixed indigenous, so picture thick hair, dark features, wide bill, etc. Again, important for later. I've been working at this job for a few months at this point. My boss, who, side note, is a total creep, had really warmed up to me and promoted me to the key holder within a few weeks of working. I had been comfortable closing on my own and working alone too. Often I would either be working the full day shift, 9.30 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. alone, or I'd work the crossover shift where I'd overlap with someone for about an hour and then I'd close the store alone. That shift was from 4 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. One evening I came in, greeted my boss. He then decided to take a smoke break for about 25 minutes within the last hour of overlap. I didn't mind, as I mentioned before, the guy was a total creep. But as he was leaving, I noticed a kind of strangely behavior man pacing outside our store. Our location was inside a mall so you get window shoppers all the time, but this guy was pacing with intention. He was wearing a large jacket, sunglasses, and a hat, so it was generally hard to see him, but he would occasionally lower his glasses to peer into the store. I even tried calling out to him from behind the desk at one point, saying something like, I don't bite, come on in, in a friendly way. He shook his head and said, just looking, in a low but clear voice. He backed away, leaving the storefront. I brushed it off as some rando just being too nervous to come into our store. Whatever, happens all the time. It was at this point my boss returned from his smoke break and began finishing up a couple of his end of day tasks before leaving. I mentioned to him that I accidentally scared off a nervous window shopper. We kind of laughed it off and disregarded it as nothing, but something felt weird. He was pacing for a solid 20 minutes, just by the window, staring in. Although, it's retail. I chalked it up to weirdness. After a few minutes, my phone rang and I picked it up. On the other end was a guy with a low and clear voice, huffing, as if he had been running, asking about getting gifts for his girlfriend. The conversation goes as follows. Oh, no worries. We have a couple of options for gifts. Is she looking for knives? Dining wear? Uh, uh, don't know. She liked knives, I guess. Okay, if you're not sure what she already has, you can get her a specialty knife. Fuck, god yeah. Sorry, specialty knives. I know I should have hung up on him at this point. It's okay. Yeah, so, specialty knives. We have an assortment. Some are meant for meat and fish, others are for vegetables. Does she cook a lot? Fucking slide that dick up inside you, babe. Excuse me? You look like you're a fat whore. Fat bitch is gonna get this cock. Your little blue shirt and blazer are gonna be shredded when I'm done rip- At that point, I promptly hung up the phone, shaking and nervously looking around. My boss knew something was up and asked me what was wrong. I told him what just happened, and he expressed his apologies, but otherwise didn't seem concerned. It clicked in my head suddenly. 
the guy window shopping earlier had the same voice as the guy on the call. I was petrified. I told my boss I was near certain it was the same guy. At that exact moment, my boss got a call from his very young girlfriend. That story is for another day. He had to leave 15 minutes earlier than planned. So there I was, alone in the store and stuck for another four and a half hours. The stars were not aligned for me this evening. I ended up calling security and letting him know that I received a threatening call from a customer who I was fairly sure was wandering the mall. They stationed an officer outside the store for the remainder of the evening, but I still felt entirely on edge. Every call that I got, I let go to voicemail. I was too scared to answer again. I was also working in another store, game store, in the mall at this time. I called my friend there to ask if after their closing shift, I could walk home with them. He lived a block behind me, and he agreed. I quickly walked over to the store with a security guard nearby. I started to walk home with my friend. The whole time I was scanning my surroundings, getting glimpses of shadowy figures outside, and making myself anxious. Eventually I got home, calmed myself down, and tried to get some rest. The next day I had a shift at my other job with the same friend who walked me home. At one point in the afternoon I picked up the phone and the calls from the same guy. I much more quickly realized who it was and hung up the phone a lot faster than the first time around. But he got as far as saying, I like this uniform better. I can see more of those curves without... Then I hung up. Our dress code was a t-shirt and jeans or leggings. I was wearing a shirt and jeans. I told my boss at the game store about what happened and we made an official buddy system after that. Nobody leaves alone ever. Luckily, we worked in pairs. We would not separate until we were either at a bus stop or at home. Nothing happened after that, thankfully. It was just awful having it happen back to back like that with no conclusion. The security guard stayed on alert for a while. I ended up speaking to another female worker in the mall. And it turns out there was a handful of plus size women getting harassed and violent phone calls for a little while. But they never caught a guy doing it. I still think about this years later. I wonder where he is and what he's doing. I never saw him again. I don't think at least. And if I did, I wouldn't have known. Anyways, feels good to get off my chest finally. When I was in high school, I worked part-time at a local coffee shop. One day, this kind of weird, overly friendly guy came in and started to talk to me at the cash register. I wore a name tag with my nickname on it, and he asked me if it was short for anything. I said yes, and told him my full name. He asked me what kind of name it is. My name originates from a Greek name, so I told him that, because it's kind of interesting. He asked me if I've ever been to the Greek festival in our city. I said no, and he replied, Well, you belong there. Them Greek girls are hot. Mind you, at this point, I'm 16, and this was a grown man. After that is when things got weird. He would show up at the coffee shop every day and ask my coworkers when I would be coming in or if I would not be coming in that day. Eventually, he would start sitting in the seat right next to the front door waiting for me to come in. One day, he physically stood and blocked my path and asked if he could buy coffee for me. Yes, at the coffee shop I worked at, and then tried to grab my hand. When I decided to walk past to go to the back, he tried to follow me behind the counter and into the back room. He would hang out there for a few hours watching me and would constantly try to talk to me. My managers eventually told me to work in the back until he left every day, and then he started sitting in a seat that was closest to the back room. After that, I started coming into work through the back door and staying until he left. My coworkers would tell him that I quit, hoping that he would stop. Then he became obsessed with one of the other girls and the cycle started over again. Truthfully, he didn't seem that harmful except the time he grabbed my hand, but it was creepy and he was constantly there. The owner of the coffee shop had to file a restraining order in the end because no matter what he did or told him, it didn't stop him, and he was just there, watching and waiting. Nothing ever happened after the restraining order. He was still allowed into the plaza the coffee shop was located in, but obviously not into the coffee shop at all. And we usually saw him go into the grocery store until the restraining order. He 
He just disappeared after that. Very creepy and kind of scary as a 16 year old girl. Hey everyone, first time poster. It's not the scariest, but it's one of the weirdest that left me with a strange feeling. So this is about the weirdest job interview I've ever had. This happened sometime after February 2018. My brother's community college was having a job fair and I went thinking, hey, this is legit. I'm going to go take some resumes and see what happens. So we're at the fair, a couple of cool booths, people looking for photographers, etc. We come across this table. I asked what they do. We work in contracts and entertainment or something like that. I hand the guy my resume. He looks at me and puts it down. Doesn't even look at the resume. He wants to schedule an interview with me. So I agree. I have to add at the time I wasn't doing well mentally. I was in the middle of what you would now call an emotional mental breakdown and not eating etc. So y'all can imagine what I look like. But nonetheless I secure the interview. I do some internet research and find that this company does not have a digital footprint besides their super bare bones website. Nothing on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Indeed, nothing. The job interview was in a random building right off the freeway. So I show up and there's no parking near the building. So I park in the neighborhood, go to the building and there's this guy, I would say in his mid 40s. He is friendly and helps me figure out how to get to the floor I'm supposed to be on. I thanked him and went up. When I get to the floor, I realized I forgot my resume. So I leave the building and walk back to my car. When I make my way back to the building, I see the same guy just standing by a window of the building. Just standing there and staring into nothing. He seemed surprised that I was behind him and not upstairs. Then I go into the job interview room. And the front desk lady is blonde in basically a spaghetti strap shirt and black pants. She interviews me, and the strangest thing is, this woman is tweaker skinny, and this isn't to body shame or anything. She was just so thin, it didn't seem normal. Now, when I first met the guy at the job fair, they were in suits, dressed sharply, and said they worked with DirecTV, and during the interview, they basically said they're handing out Obama phones on the street. The whole office was decorated in basic Target decorations, some I saw later at a Target. Then the next week, they scheduled me for a full interview, and there's the same old dude, but this time, he's interviewing, and has the same panicked look on his face like last time. At the front desk this day is another young woman, better dressed, but just as tweaker skinny, and much more on the, this job is so amazing, I loved my job. My interview this time is some young guy in his early 20s, wearing a suit two sizes too big, comically so. The guy gave me an interview that was basically the same interview as before and they were going to start my onboarding. Something felt weird and something told me to just say no so I ended up bailing but damn does this interview still stand in my head. I emailed the community college about it later but basically what they told me was we can't fix if people at our job fairs lie to us about their jobs which having worked at a college department that had job fairs really concerned me. How do they not verify the people who show up? I know in my old department, they would painstakingly verify the people there. To this day, I'm still worried about this. How many other college students have met these people? What was their exact goal? Why were all the female staff so thin? Why did they have no social media footprint for an entertainment-centered company? How many people actually fell for this? And what exactly did I almost get myself into? I work with disabled and vulnerable adults. One time I was grabbing a drink with a friend, Joe, and he asked if I could work with his girlfriend Jane. Jane and I got on like a house on fire. She had some physical disabilities but also had some mental health issues leading to her being pre-described antipsychotics. Joe was practically on top of Jane's medicine as he trained to be a mental health nurse. He had me filling in sheets as if I was working in the psych ward at their house rather than the private residence. 
Usually, I simply make sure people I work with take their meds. Sometimes, if they're on control drugs, I might fill in a tick box, but he had full on sheets that I was expected to fill in as a nurse would. Over time, I realized how controlling Joe was and how he used Jane's mental health against her. Gradually, I realized that if he attended doctor's appointments with her, she would get an increase in meds. And if I attended with her, this didn't happen. Joe was getting me stressed out with how useless I was, not putting items back into the cupboards perfectly, making spelling mistakes, or missing punctuation on the over-the-top med sheets. I didn't notice how quite off balance he was keeping me, but I was very stressed out. So stressed out that I had several episodes of insomnia. One of these episodes, the doctor's concluded led me to hallucinations twice while waking up. The doctor gave me sleeping pills and the hallucinations didn't come back. When I saw Joe hit Jane for the first time, I did have the wherewithal to call social services, but Jane claimed it didn't happen. Joe said I misunderstood what was going on and that I didn't have any right to interfere in their relationship. The first time Jane left, he claimed I had undue influence over her, and he left me checking words I had said in case I somehow was influencing her as a vulnerable person. Joe pinned me against the wall by my throat because I tried to prevent him from hitting her. I knew that I needed to leave, so I mentally gave Jane until January to leave him, and then I would stop working there. I registered a complaint with Joe's nursing course about his treatment of the vulnerable. She left him before Christmas. By June, without him influencing her doctors, she had been taken off all the psych meds and didn't have any episodes since she had left, almost as if the stressor wasn't present. Her physical disabilities improved significantly as well in the years since she left. That's because of the lack of unnecessary psych meds. I haven't worked for Jane in years, as she moved away to marry a lovely bloke. I do work for a young adult who is a pregnancy in the workplace and for the first six months has me in the breakout area identifying anything a disability charity can provide for access needs. His colleagues chat away to me on their breaks, including one who is a very proud daughter. The daughter has a colleague used to provide fun tales of dumbasses who came to work hung over nature. Then the colleague turned up to work while drunk and high at a psych ward. Then the colleague boasted about keeping an ex-girlfriend interfering friend quiet by feeding the girlfriend drugs so she didn't call social services on him. The daughter has made a complaint. Then I got to see a photo of this colleague. Of course, it's Joe. And I'm stuck here thinking about those times I hallucinated due to insomnia. Or did he put something in my tea? Might be completely unsupervised. Jada, my supervisor, was about to take off for the night. She kept repeating the same instructions over and over. Then again, this place had huge turnover. Maybe she honestly forgot I wasn't that new. No phones, she urged. If you got a slow night, make yourself useful. Nod and smile. I decided to get the worst tasks out of the way early. Cleaning the bathroom, restocking the freezers, taking out the trash checking the receipt rolls, watering the plants. Took me about an hour. It wasn't even midnight yet, and I was pretty much done for the night. I considered mopping the floor, but I figured I could save that for later. I'd been useful enough. I was on my fourth game of Team Flight Tactics when I realized I'd forgotten my name tag. No big deal, really, but I figured I'd might as well fetch it. The manager's office was usually locked, but tonight I had the keys to it. I opened the door and started going through the drawers. Didn't take long to find the name tags. There was an entire box of them. At first, I thought they were all blanks, but as I started going through them, I realized they were all previous employees. Sure, this place had high turnover, but this? We were talking a hundred people. Easy. This was ridiculous. I admit, this is where I started asking myself some questions. During the day shift, there was always someone new, someone being trained or interviewed. I had only been there for about a week, and I was already feeling like a veteran. The only people who seemed to be regulars were the managers, Jada, Kenny, and Alicia. They seemed decent enough, 
So why were there so many people quitting? As I got back behind the register, I realized there was a customer outside, literally just standing outside the door. I waved at them. There was something off. They were just standing there, but they were so close that the automated door should have opened, and yet, the door remained closed. It was a man, late thirties, scraggly beard, rough red shirt, bit of a chunky look with sunken bloodshot eyes and a natural frown. He just stared at me. I waved at him again, but I got no response. Can I help you? I called out. Nothing. Not a blink. I pulled out a chair and sat down. The man stayed outside, looking in. I tried not to think about it, but it was bothering me. I couldn't see his car anywhere on the cameras, and he didn't seem to want anything. I couldn't tell if he was on drugs or just being weird. I gave him a few minutes, but he just stood there. Finally, I got up from my chair. Sir, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. He didn't seem to listen. He was a bit shorter than me, but he had a good 50 pounds on me. He'd be trouble in a brawl. I don't want to call the police, I said. Can I help you, sir? I pulled out my phone and held it up for him to see. I dialed the number and held it up for him to see. But still, nothing. Then, my phone rang. Unknown caller. It was just past midnight. Without letting the unnerving man out of my sight, I took the call. Yeah, I answered. Please don't hang up, a voice on the other end said. You're in danger, and I can help. I was getting nervous. I wandered back and forth, watching those bloodshot eyes follow me. Who is this? I asked. I'm Angie, the voice responded. I used to work there. Same shift, same manager's. I wanted to warn you. I'd seen an Angie tag in the box earlier, maybe even several. She sounded young and nervous as all hell. In a few hours, something terrible is going to happen, she continued. And if you're not out by then, you might as well be dead. What are you talking about? Look outside. I'd been looking outside this entire time, but I'd been entirely focused on this one man outside the front door. From across the road, I could see more people, about a dozen, lumbering out of the woods. I need you to leave, she said. Just walk out. Nothing will happen if you just walk away. Nothing will come for you. Who? Who are these people? What's going to happen? I, I... I don't know what... Look, she interrupted. It is perfectly simple. Just walk out the door. Something in my head screamed for me not to do it. That I shouldn't step outside and just walk past these people. They felt malicious, and I couldn't put my finger on why. Still, I stepped up to the door. Leaving seemed like the obvious choice. Strangely, it didn't open. It won't open, I said. Hold on. They... They want to keep you in there. They don't want you to leave. They want you to stay and die. Die? I asked. What do you mean? I stopped my pacing. Something was wrong. Was I locked in? Tell me exactly what is about to happen. I demanded. Something is in there with you. Angie sighed. It could be five minutes. It could be a few hours. But that thing in there is coming for you. And what thing are we talking about? The man with bloodshot eyes had two people joining him. A young man with a grotesque overbite. And a young woman who could easily be mistaken for a child. All of them stared at me with the same broken eyes and rough clothes. They stopped, inches short from the door. It doesn't have a name, Angie said. But it'll leave you empty. It'll leave you like the people out front. But if I leave, I'll be okay. Yes! That's what I'm telling you. Hold on, I'll check the back. I hurried out back to the employee entrance. I pressed down on the cold handle and the door swung open. Outside were another group of four people. Two young men, an older woman, and a girl no more than 16 years old. 
They all stared at me. I couldn't tell if they were drawn to me or the store. I stopped short of stepping through the door. Why do... do they come here? I asked Angie. They serve their master. They want the spoils. What spoils? What? I thought about it. She was talking about me. Right, I said, nodding to myself. I see. Are you at the back door? Are you there yet? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Just walk out, she whispered. It's not too late. I was just about to walk out when a thought hit me. Why would they lock the front door but not the back? That didn't make any sense. If the purpose was to keep me here, they could easily barricade the back as well. Something didn't add up. The door is open, I said. Great, you can still make it. Why wouldn't they lock the back door, Angie? She hesitated and there was a brief pause. If they're locking me in here to hurt me, why wouldn't they lock the back door? I repeated. I don't know, she said, but you have to trust me. They gave me the keys, Angie. They go everywhere. I can lock and unlock this door a hundred times. What's going on? They, they don't usually do that. I closed the door and stepped back. Four less pairs of eyes staring at me. Look, said Angie. I was the last person to leave. They messed up. I found a spare key and got out before it was too late. Maybe, maybe they figured I'd warn you. Maybe they're trying to trick you. Sure, yeah. I chuckled. Convenient. I'm trying to help you. She cried out. Those things out there are to discourage you from going outside. They're harmless, but they're there to scare you. Can't you see it as all just a way for them to keep you in there? I got one person screaming at me to go outside and no one telling me to stay. No locked doors, just plenty of creeps staring at me. What am I supposed to believe? Fine, you want more proof? Call the police, hang up and call them. I ended the call. There were eight people out front by now, all gathering outside the front door. I couldn't tell if they were trying to get in or if they were waiting for me to step out. I called the emergency services, only to be met with silence. Not even a dial tone, just a blank nothing. I tried a few more numbers. My mom, my friends. I tried going online, but all I got was cached copies of sites I'd been to before. My background picture had changed to a black screen, but there was something else. Something had started to smell. The freshly stocked frozen goods had suddenly gone bad, and a stench was oozing out of the freezers. Our flowers by the counter had withered and died, all except the sunflowers, which turned to sickly blue. I wasn't getting through to anyone. Being inside was awful. The single serving frozen meals were making me gag. I figured I'd go for the landline. As I got to the manager's office, I got another call on my phone. Unknown caller. Looking back and forth between my phone and the landline, I weighed my options. I chose Angie. How were you getting through? I asked her. How do you know my number? I still got the email password. I just checked your application. But how come your number works? Everything else is down. I'm calling from a private network, she said. They don't know there's a way in. They? I asked. I thought it was just one thing. No, they're working together. People just go missing without someone noticing. So there's like a... an intelligence behind it? A conspiracy? Yeah, people come and go in these places all the time. Are they paying you under the table? They figured, um... It was sort of a trial, and no paperwork, no missing people, no records, just a box of name tags. It made sense in a way, but I needed more. I needed proof. There had to be something. Why didn't you call me earlier? I asked. You could have called me as soon as I got the job or, or as soon as my shift started. I had to make sure Jada wasn't around, she said. She would have tried to trick you. I'm not sure you're not trying to trick me. Why would I spend my time calling you from across the country just to have you fail? If I was part of this, 
I would have just let you sit there with your goddamn team flight tactics and die. She went quiet. So did I. I counted my breaths as I looked outside. There were more of them now. How did you know what I was playing? I asked. She didn't respond. The silence hung in the air. I'm asking you, how did you know what I was playing? She was just as quiet as the man with the bloodshot eyes, still waiting for me outside the door. You're watching. You knew I was alone. You knew I was getting antsy about the guy showing up outside. Yeah, she sighed. You tried to get me out as soon as he showed up. You tried to trick me before there were too many of them to scare me off. That's... that's not... She sighed. I could hear heavy breathing. As I paced back and forth, I was getting ready to hang up. This was a trick. She was the one tricking me, clearly. Trying to get me to go outside to join those things. I know this looks bad, she said. I know. I'm sorry. I'm honestly just trying to help you. This time I was the one keeping quiet. I walked up to the door, studying the people outside. Blank stares, following my every move. I felt like a snake charmer, like they could snap out of it and tear me apart in the blink of an eye. As I said, I... I have the passwords for everything. I'm the only one who knows them. I just wanted to give you the best shot at getting out of there. I hoped they wouldn't come tonight, but as soon as they did, I just... I had to do something. You're not being honest with me. I'm not lying. I'm just... just having a hard time explaining it. There's a lot of stuff about this that all sounds completely insane. I don't want to throw you off the deep end. Give it to me straight, I demanded. Tell me what the hell is coming for me. It's not a... thing. Like, not real. It's there, but... it's just... I don't know how to explain it. It just steps through. Steps through what? The world. The air. A ripple in time or... or something. It just steps in. And it's there. And then... Then it shoves some kind of mouth spike into your head and gargles up something inside. A mouth spike? What the hell are you? Yes, a spike. And no, I mean, it goes into your mouth. It doesn't have a mouth of its own. It just goes into you and gone. Game over. I didn't know what to think. My mind was a jumbled mess and I felt my pulse rising and falling. There were over 18 people outside in various states of disarray, all of them just staring at me. If I just stepped outside, I'd know for sure. What does it look like? Does it... The lights flickered. There was a loud hum, a buzz, and then an electric failure. One of the fluorescent lights burned out, while the others just slowly dimmed to nothing. This was real. It was make or break by this point. Something was happening. The lights went out, I whispered. Is this... Now! Angie screamed. Get out! Now! I ran. I tripped and fumbled my way into the back room in complete darkness. I almost twisted my ankle as I bumped into the lunch table. I could barely hear my thoughts. And I had to remind myself to breathe. The roof of my mouth ached as if anticipating a piercing pain. I could feel my head filling with blood and adrenaline as my dry eyes refused to blink. As I put my hand on the back door, I did the mistake of pulling instead of pushing. It took me three tries before a thought hit me. I couldn't see a thing on the door because of the darkness. In fact, I couldn't see anything. Nothing. Angie, I wheezed putting my phone to my ear. Are you there? Hurry, she screamed. You can make it. How did you see it? The thing was huge. It just... No. How did you see it in the complete darkness? You... You said the lights went out. It was right there. I can't even see the sign on the back door. How the hell did you see a spike? Look, I... And to add to that, 
How the hell do you know what it does with that spike? You've never seen the thing kill. You said you were the last one to work this shift. And the thing sure as hell didn't kill you. You're missing the point. I... It doesn't add up, Angie. None of this adds up. You couldn't have seen it, and there's no way for you to know how it kills. I stood there in the dark. I heard Angie panting on the other side, matching my breathing. You're lying to me, Angie. You're not trying to save me. She stopped breathing. For about a minute, it was just quiet. The call ended. A wave washed over me. I was either dead or saved. There was no in between. I was moments from finding out. Every little sound shook me. A breeze just outside. A crackling wire. Ventilation struggling to turn back on. I hadn't even noticed my hand was on the door handle. You lied to me. I said out loud. You. You did. I caught you. There was a sound coming from the other side of the door. A shuffling of feet. Yes said Angie. From the other side of the door, I must have stood there for an hour until the power came back on. The people outside were gone. Angie was gone. My phone worked just fine, so I called everyone and just cried for help. The police found me locked in the bathroom in a full panic, and I barely even remember being escorted out. Cameras had picked up the mob gathering outside, but that was pretty much it. They couldn't be identified from the back of their heads. Jada and the other managers were called in, and they seemed genuinely surprised. I've since looked it up. A hundred people starting and quitting their job in a place like that isn't uncommon. People come and go all the time. The managers honestly didn't know why people disappeared. It seems. Maybe this is just how things work. Or maybe there's more than one Angie out there preying on short-term workers. And the front door? There was no conspiracy there. The thing just jammed sometimes. Some kind of trouble with the wiring. If I'd messed with it just a little bit more, the thing could have kicked wide open. That broken door was the one thing that saved me from joining them that night. I would have walked right out as soon as Angie asked me to. I worked there for another four months, but just day shifts and weekends... The night shift seemed to go off without a hitch though. Maybe Angie and her friends moved on from an easy meal. I've saved up enough money for my move to Minneapolis, but I'd never forgive myself if I didn't put this into writing. Looking back at it, it feels surreal. There are things out there. Things that want us to join them.